for the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com thelibertybeat. A bill passed by the Guatemalan Congress in June is facing backlash from fishing communities and indigenous peoples who fear the destruction of the biodiversity and sovereignty of their food supply. The Plant Varieties Protection Bill, also known as the Monsanto Bill, is being appealed in the Guatemalan Constitutional Court. Under the new law, biotechnology corporations can obtain intellectual property rights for the plant varieties they have created, discovered, or genetically modified. On Wednesday, a federal district judge in Louisiana upheld a state ban on same-sex marriages. Judge Martin L.C. Feldman said the court would stick with a meaning of what marriage is that has endured in history for thousands of years, that he believes to be constitutional. Feldman is the only judge to uphold a ban since the Supreme Court ruled against part of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act in June 2013. Days after the Islamic State released another video depicting the alleged beheading of an American journalist, the Internet is abuzz with cries of conspiracy. Many alternative news sites and social media posts are calling the video a fake. Authors and analysts point to the lack of blood coming from the neck of Stephen Sotloff and the fact that the video immediately fades to black as the Islamic State captor begins slicing at his neck. While many on the Internet believe the video to be a fake, the family of Stephen Sotloff is understandably distraught over what has taken place. A representative of the family released a statement earlier this week saying their son was no hero. He was a man simply trying to find good in a world full of darkness. Whether the video be real or fake, one thing is certain. In a world of unmanned aerial drones, planes crashing into buildings, and civilizations clashing around the globe, truth really is stranger than fiction. Today's edition of the Liberty Bean is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Interesting new ad campaign from Applebee's, which is encouraging customers to visit the restaurant ironically. They're designed to attract young people to Applebee's by inviting them to ridicule its food service and atmosphere. Here, take a look. What do you guys want to do? We could go to Applebee's. <laughs> No, let's seriously go to Applebee's. <laughs> Look guys, it's grilled. It's just like my neighborhood restaurant, only completely geographically not specific. Yeah, nothing like a wild time at Applebee's, right? <laughs> Applebee's, wouldn't it be funny to go to Applebee's? I like Isn't that it. persuasive? Yeah. But, you know, they're not resting on their laurels. They're adding new menu items designed to be ridiculed outright, like the fajita cordon bleu and the chicken strip explosion. Those sound ridiculous. I know. But, you know, so far this has been so successful that Applebee's is actually prepping a second series of ads aimed at customers who enjoy making fun of annoying young people who do things ironically. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you like. The toll-free number is here for you at 855-450-FREE. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features that are waiting for you there on the site. You can get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners by creating the content there. You actually post up whatever you want to see talked about on the air or at least discussed online, and then other listeners can vote it up or down whether or not they like or dislike it. So go to freetalklive.com and get interactive there. All kinds of stuff on the news and in the news to discuss here tonight. Uh, Mark, you had a story about a man who is, he got in trouble in a city council meeting, was removed for not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I know that as we speak right now in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, uh, they are having a city council meeting. And at that particular meeting, the Bearcat is coming back up. Now, for longtime listeners of the show, you know that uh, here in Keene, we were one of the first places, probably the first place in the entire country, uh, the entire country that, uh, that has opposed the Bearcat. There were people that came out 
in mass numbers to oppose this monstrosity. Now, Mark, yeah, what I is mean, the Bearcat? The, the the whole thing with the Bearcat's kind of swept. What is, what is a Bearcat? A Bearcat is a uh, attack van, um, bulletproof attack van with a turret on top. Now, by a turret, I don't mean a gun, but it's a... Uh, a protected area from which someone can shoot. So well, they can mount a gun up. They can mount a fifty cal up there. They can. Yeah, yep, that's, that's what when it's they for. when they use it in Iraq, but they use, mostly use it here in the United States. I they believe s- plenty of police departments have mounted a machine gun up there. A fifty cal. I don't know if it's a fifty cal, but they've mounted some kind of damn machine gun up there. Well, that's crazy. Um, but Keen has not done that to it, but they do have this big tank truck thing that. It's they certainly an attack ram van. Through, right? Ram through walls and insert It has a gas, gas. Disp- dispenser. It's crazy. Yeah, they've got gun ports on it. So Keene was the first place kind of in the history of the uh, this federal program that essentially offers these Bearcats and now MRAPs, uh, these mine-resistant vehicles, up to local police departments. And in this case, the Department of Homeland Security that funds it. So they take federal tax dollars. They spend $300,000 roughly at this company called Lenko. And then uh, Lenko ships out one of these machines to various police departments. Over 300 of these have been distributed, and that number was as of two years ago. So maybe it's 400 now. I don't know what the, the total is. But it's a lot of damn Bearcats all over the place. Keen had a great pushback. The head salesman was uh, asked to come out here from Lenko to try to save the sale. And he did. He saved the sale, despite, you know, a couple hundred people coming out to the city council meeting to pack the, uh, the council chambers in opposition. Like 95 percent of the people were opposed to this thing. The 5 percent that were in favor of it were police and friends and family of the police. So they came out. They opposed this thing. The city council voted overwhelmingly for it. They voted in favor of the police, despite what people wanted, what people were were being very vocal about. Normally, it's hard to get people in anywhere to care about a local political issue. That's true. Now, the uh, city the city councilor um, that uh, the, the, did this, actually, you spoke to him today, was it? And yeah, that was uh, something that was sort of a, a private conversation, but uh, but yeah, he and I had uh, had a talk about how to sort of maximize the uh, the impact of this. And he asked you not to. That's come. That's kind of a private conversation, okay. and uh, I would would appreciate you not talking about that. So um, anyway, since you've already blown it, Mark, um, yeah, he did ask me to not come to the meeting. Well, yeah, and I, I thought that it was important to point out that um, you know that look, the, like the political activism that we do here in uh, that you do here in, in New Hampshire has its uh, like a two sided uh, sword to it. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that uh, that he felt that the reason just, that they just keep revealing more of this uh, private conversation. Go well, ahead. I don't know You're what else to do, say. Do it all right now. So go ahead. It's it important to point out that if you you know s the bed, that people are going to point out that you've s the bed. Um, so I don't I don't know what I'm. What not are you try- talking about? S the bed. Okay. So he said that uh, that he th- felt like he would have had five more votes, and mm-hmm. he got no votes. Um, so That's five not true. He five had votes. four votes. He did have four votes. That's right. So he felt like he would have won um, mm-hmm. in getting rid of the Bearcat if it hadn't been for the support. I'm using uh, uh, air quotes here of Free Keen, your organization, right? That's what he said. Okay. So I'm sorry that I revealed something I didn't realize that I wasn't supposed to. But you know, I mean, people need to know that there's consequences to combative activism. Okay. So since you went there, I was just going to talk about Bearcat. Uh, as an issue and, you know, what's happening with it being proposed to being removed and returned uh, by the Keene City Council. But since you wanted to make this a political issue, um, anyway, the— I don't think it's a political the, issue. I think it's important to point out. Well, first of all, it, that's his interpretation of it is. what happened. just his. And obviously, if you're going to do activism that is a threat to the state, then the people who are in the state aren't going to like that. And he also pointed out, since we're revealing the contents of the conversation for everyone to hear who's listening to the radio in Keene, New Hampshire tonight, uh, that uh, he also pointed out that the uh, city councilors are cowards. And you know that's true. So I am not going to take any blame or feel like I'm somehow responsible for the bear, uh, the bear cat coming to Keene because some chicken s city councilors were too afraid to vote as the people wanted. Not as freekeen.com, a website with a handful of activists behind it wanted, but what obviously people in Keen who came out in force to oppose this thing wanted to put the blame on Free Keen 
a simple website to put the blame on a group of activists who have made an impact here, obviously, to put the blame on us for doing things that make a difference, for doing things that bring attention to the ideas of freedom, to put the blame on us for, for having to vote for the Bearcat, to vote in favor of the police state because people are activists, is ridiculous and insulting. And I, I won't stand for it. I and think, I'm, not, I'm not going to apologize for what has gone on here in Keene because what has happened here in Keene has brought all kinds of press attention to the ideas of freedom. It has brought press, millions of dollars in press, to the Free State Project, bringing more people here who care about freedom. This is a beacon of activism. This is a beacon. Keen is a is a fishbowl. It's a place, it's a stage. It's a place where activists can get out and be seen and get their message out and be heard and you know, you, you just it, it sounds like you're pointing fingers here, Mark. It's like nan yeah, see you guys have S the bed. How would whatever. you know if I'm pointing fingers? You haven't let me speak. You've been uh, speaking plenty. Go ahead. Um I would agree with you that uh well first off, I'm not sure that I uh, that I agree with his assessment that these people would have necessarily voted the way they would have um the, the, the They claimants. may have told him it was because of free king. They may so, have. I don't which, I'm not denying that, what he said. I'm not denying what he said either. I'm just saying I'm not sure of the assessment. I'm not sure that I believe those people when they say it. If, in fact, they chose not to vote that way because of, uh, you know, a dozen or so activists that they don't like, then they have done an, an amazing, a colossal disservice to their community. If, um, if that's the reason they did it, it is a terrible reason. I would completely concur. Um, I, I think that... I think people make bad – I think people, politicians, local politicians can make bad decisions for reasons like this. They think, oh, I don't want to be aligned with these people or that people. I think it's a silly, silly reason, but mm -hmm. it may be. I don't think so, but it may be. I don't know. Well, you shouldn't be surprised uh, when you do activism in a place like Keene, New Hampshire, which is a very small place. There are about 23,000 people or so that live here. And I don't know if that number includes the 4,000 or so college students. I really don't know if that includes it. So let's just say twenty to 25,000 people uh, living here. It's a fairly small place. So when you do things that uh, are visible, they're visible by a good chunk of the population should they decide to pay attention and you shouldn't be surprised that when you do activism that is inherently a threat to the state, not in a violent way, but in an ideological way, uh, activism that is a threat to the state, then the people within the state, the people that are loved ones and, the connect and are connected to and friends with the people that work for the state, they're going to be upset because they're going to feel like you're threatening the status quo. And that's exactly what we're doing. And so no wonder they're upset. And the people who run in the circles, in the political circles, tend to hang out with one another, sort of like activists tend yeah, to Yeah, but those people wanted a tank. Um, that's what they'd said. And the people of Keene said they didn't want it. And yeah. the political class decided to use Free Keene as mm -hmm. a an excuse for not doing what the people of Keene wanted, was it's what just I cowardice. saw. It's just cowardice. So more coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here toll free at 855 450 free. The Bear Cat is back in the news, and freekeen.com, of course, has the story. In fact, we broke the story uh, about city councilor Terry, uh, Terry Clark, who was the, the lone guy who stood against the Bear Cat the first time. The Bear Cat being this armored truck, basically a tank, as it was called by some of the city councilors here in Keene. This uh, armored truck tank thing that has been distributed probably to where you live. If you live in a, even a, you know, semi-medium to large sized town, there's a good chance you've got one of these behemoths, these monsters sitting in uh, some police station bay somewhere, sitting out back of the police station. And uh, it was delivered here in Keene back in 2012. Much, uh, you know, there was a lot of opposition. There was a lot of people who said, we don't want this. This is militarizing the police. The city council meeting uh, meetings about it were packed, packed. People couldn't even get in there. And uh, tonight's the night where they're going to be addressing this uh, in the first place. And so we'll see what happens. In theory, what should happen is it should be assigned to a uh, what they call a committee. And then that committee will have a public hearing about the issue. They'll make a decision. It'll go back to the full city council and they'll vote on it. So will the Bearcat be removed from Keene, New Hampshire? I sure hope so, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. I know that last time it went down in flames. And as you pointed out, Mark, it's all Ian Freeman's fault, <laughs> according to uh, certain politicians. I, I think it's nice. It must ridiculous. be ridiculous. It must be nice to have a uh, to, to have somebody upon whom you can blame all of your bad political moves. Right. It was our <laughs> fault too. Uh, I would have served my constituents in Keene, New Hampshire, if only this bugbear called Ian Freeman hadn't come out and put in a petition and showed hundreds of people thought we had poor judgment getting a tank in a town yeah. of twenty thousand. 
I mean, really? That's their excuse? I think it's ter- Look, Ian, I every opportunity I can I have to like nail you to a cross, I will do it. And I don't do it in this circumstance because this sounds to me like a bunch of people who are who don't want to take responsibility for their it own actions. It was the same thing when the city council around here was there was a proposal that they eliminate or not eliminate, but that they send some sort of a letter about marijuana legalization to the uh, the state house. Yeah. And that was proposed by somebody in the government, a former cop. He uh, put that forward. And again, it was because of the smokeouts. It was because of the 420 yep. celebrations here in Keene uh, that made international headlines in places like Cannabis and Culture Magazine. By the way, those was the reason why they had to vote against it. They never give you this option ahead of time. Do you understand that? Like, so they're never like, look, I'll tell you what, we, the. Uh, you know, the head crap heads of Keene, New Hampshire, mm-hmm. will send a letter to Concord uh, hoping for recreational marijuana legalization if you will just stop your smokeouts here in, in downtown <laughs> Keene, New Hampshire. They never say that. What they say no. is, you had smokeouts, so now we won't do this. And now they say, well, you know, we would have voted for the Bearcat. Yeah, or voted against, you know, voted to get rid of the Bearcat if you wouldn't have done whatever it was that you did, and they're not even clear what that is. Convenient excuse, right? Convenient. So if you want to bargain, and you want people to believe that you're actually bargaining, what you should do is mm, make a freaking proposal, and then see whether somebody takes you up on it, rather than just blaming somebody afterwards, because that position is pathetic, it's weak, and it makes you look like a GD liar. So you want a great uh, source for news? Go check out freedomsphoenix.com. They've got real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com has up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Freedomsphoenix.com. Get their free daily dispatch via email as well. Uh, so yeah, Terry Clark, uh, did have a conversation with me today and you know, he didn't ask me to keep it a secret, but it seemed to me like something that probably should be kept on the down low. Now I wasn't here. You've blown it wide open, yeah, Mark. I, I wasn't there for uh, it. So, you yeah. threw Terry under the bus, uh, tonight. So he's, I haven't thrown nice him guy. under the bus. Uh, but anyway, so he's standing up again here and we'll get an update. Maybe I know there's some, uh, Liberty activists who did go to the meeting tonight. If he feels bad about what I did, uh, you know, come to me, I'll do something nice for your campaign. That's true. He is running for uh, for office up here. Anyway, so the proposal's coming up, and we'll see what happens. We'll let you know. I'm hoping it works out. In fact, what I learned today was that he didn't even know about the Davis thing. We talked about Davis, California, just the other night on uh, how they have voted. The city council there has voted to get rid of the MRAP, this mine-resistant armor-protecting mm-hmm. thing, basically an armored personnel carrier. And they voted to get rid of this thing. And I thought maybe he was inspired by that. I thought uh, Terry had you know, perhaps seen that news story and thought, okay, well, if they can do it there, we can do it here. Turns out he hadn't even heard about it. So he was just sort of inspired on his own volition through awesome uh, the news about Ferguson, I think, is what sort of spurned this. In fact, he sent the letter in to the city council a couple of weeks ago. So it's sort of been in the in the works for a little bit. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. You bring up anything. John's in Simi Valley, California. What's on your mind tonight, John? Um, I had a, Well, I don't think you guys would have the answer to this question, so I'm just posing it to the listeners. Uh, basically, when it comes down to drug testing for uh, employment, um, you know, I figure, well, I, I live in a state where you have uh, medical marijuana, and... Uh, you know, a lot of places are like, okay, well, can you pass a drug test? And, well, you know, a lot of a lot of people that might be on, like, prescription drugs, like, you know, uh, for example, with an Oxycontin or uh, Adderall or whatever, and, you know, if they test positive for that, they could say to their, you know, well, I have a prescription for that. But if you, if you have a medical marijuana prescription and you test positive for marijuana, uh, I mean, I don't know if employers would uh, – consider that the same i mean i i just kind of i don't know i think it's like a double standard if they didn't and i don't know if anyone would know wait wait, wait. okay and, so you live in california and you don't know no <laughs> sorry okay well i mean it's a prescription when you when you get a when you get a cannabis card out there it's the equivalent of having a prescription for this thing they just give you the card uh it so that you can be. prove that you have a prescription to the police should they stop you this is my understanding i don't live in california but I, I know people who do i'm sorry 
Well, that's for police, but I'm talking about for employment. And, I mean, employers might see it differently, you know? They might. They're no, certainly under no obligation, probably, to employ people who are using substances that they don't agree with. But ultimately, I would think that many employers in California are totally fine with medical cannabis users. This is, like, yeah. this is old news out there. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, been around a long I was, time. I figured... I mean, I just was like, you know what? I just went like cold turkey as of the first. I'm like, well, I'm just going to go straight. I'm not going to have to go through having to get one of those like detox things from one of the head shops or anything. But I'm just thinking, you know, it, it probably it would seem to be like a pretty big double standard if they would be like, oh, it's okay for you to be on Oxycontin, but not, you know, well, smoking some. What you're saying is, you know? what you're saying is, if you don't really know, you haven't even heard any yeah. stories about this happening, right? You're just totally that's, speculating. That's, that's, I'm just really likely. That's why I'm calling to yeah. see you know, if any listeners or anybody else would have any uh, any uh, say so on well, that. Well, certainly anybody else is welcome to call in with with actual experience. But it's my understanding that you know in California this is nothing new. I mean, we're talking about a, a law now that's nearly two decades old. It was 1996 when Proposition 215, I believe it was, was passed in California. So companies out there have had a long time to get used to this. And I thank you for the call tonight. <laughs> there are plenty of people in California who have these medical cards. They're so common that the police don't even bother people anymore, from what I understand. Like I have L- headaches. My back hurts. They don't even bother you. You walk down you walk down the street smoking a joint. This is what I'm told, okay, by a guy who was living there, that you know they just don't care. Why bother anymore? It's free talk live. 855 450 free. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. Now, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make... Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Talk Live, and we invite you here to bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, you can go and check out Modafinil at modup.net. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, you need to know about Modafinil. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer that offers multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and great focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about Modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Over at modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality Modafinil with the highest potency so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net, by the way, gives you a deep discount if you pay with Bitcoin. 33% off. In fact, that's probably the deepest discount I've, uh, one of the deepest discounts I've ever seen. Sure is. On, uh, on a product that uh, give you a discount if you pay with Bitcoin. And to make the deal even better, whether you're paying with Bitcoin or not, use this code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. Again, code FTL at modup.net for world class service at a great price for Modafinil, M O D U P, modup.net. So the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about the city uh, Bearcat, this tank, this attack truck that police departments all around the country have received. And just recently, Davis, California, city council voted to get rid of what's called the MRAP. Right, this is even... Bigger and scarier than a Bearcat. It's uh, mine-resistant, and the Bearcat is actually not mine-resistant. That's one of the failures of the Bearcat, which is why it ultimately didn't work for the military and is now being sold off to police departments around the country. So anyway, the uh, Davis, California bureaucrats, uh, elected people, got rid of this thing, or they voted to get rid of it. I don't know how long it'll take them to actually uh, send it back. But that's the proposal that's on the table in uh, in Keene tonight. But it kind of leads into a different story, Mark, that's related to going to city council meetings. And a lot of these city council meetings, at least that I've been to, and it probably is like this where you live, they'll say the Pledge of Allegiance right at the very beginning of the meeting, sort of call the meeting to order. Everybody stands up. They put their hand over their heart, face the flag, and just like in elementary, middle, and high school, uh, they chant this pledge. They chant the Pledge of Allegiance prayer. to the flag, yeah. They chant this prayer to this idol of the flag, and I find it offensive. I will not participate in pledging to the flag. I will typically I will remain seated during a pledge. What happened in this case, Mark, and where was it? Do you know? Winter Garden, Florida. This oh, okay. is coming from the Sun Sentinel. Uh, Winter Garden Mayor John Rees asked police to remove a man from a city commission meeting Thursday night because he refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Wow. I just said, either stand or go in the hallway. He wouldn't, said Reese 64, who was <laughs> elected to a third three-year term in March. At it, least around here, they're smart enough to ignore this it, when people don't stand for the pledge. It wasn't premeditated. I just reacted. It hit me. I said it. I gave him an option. Life will go on. Reese said he considered the man's refusal to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to be disrespectful to American military troops who are serving overseas and others who have given their lives in defense of freedom. And I would point out that one of the freedoms 
that they would have given their lives for. Is the freedom to disrespect them? Is the freedom... Well, it's not disrespecting them. Well, I agree with that, but that's his in- interpretation. Right. I don't know... Like, this is the thing I never really get, is is that the soldiers aren't fighting for the American government unless they're fighting for the American government. It, like, it's convenient. I, I The flag isn't the soldiers. It doesn't say... To the um, you know, I pledge allegiance to this flag for the military men and women it represents. It says to the republic, and the republic is inarguably the government. Now you can say what you want about the republic if that's what you want to do. We almost never use that terminology here in America. We say republican, but we don't say republic very uh, very much. But uh, it's the government. The republic is the government, and you. Either you're saying that, you know, I like the government or I don't like the government or whatever it is, whatever this means to you, but you can't really be slippery about it all. Disrespecting the flag. uh, By the way, um, some people will say that, no, the flag is not a military banner. It is not a war banner, which is what I'll often uh, call it. I believe that flags historically have been uh, items employed by militaries and only recently have they become so ingrained with a nation uh, specifically. Well, when I say that, it's like, well, no, that's not what it is. But then, really, I'm disrespecting the troops? So which is it? Um, Anyway, he says, life will go on. Uh, The man was identified by city manager Mike Bolfager as uh, Joseph Richardson, 51, who has repeatedly asked the city to change its invocation policy. Hmm. According to the city's recording of the meeting, Ray's Rees asked everyone to stand for the first for the invocation, which is a brief ceremonial prayer to reflect um, the friction that opens the Winter Garden uh, Commission meetings. And then I have a problem with that, too. Yeah. Well, I heard it and it's definitely occurred. Uh, I don't think I have to. Richardson said uh, while the crowd of 150 people stood. Wow. And that's waited. a lot of people. At a right. City council meeting. Yeah, that's a lot. And with Richardson seated, the commissioner, Bobby Olswinski, Offered the invocation, asking for a blessing on the citizens and the city staff. We thank you for allowing us to be in a country where we're free to believe and think and pray. <laughs> Did they really say that right before they threatened yep, this guy? Yep. And after the prayer, Rees uh, addressed the seated Richardson. Now, sir, please stand while we do the pledge. You don't have to say it, but please stand, <laughs> the mayor said. While Richardson didn't rise, the mayor spoke to police chief George A. Wow. Brennan, chief. Ask him to either stand or please escort him out till we uh, get through with the pledge. It's crazy. The police chief approached Richardson and asked, what are you going to do? Richardson <laughs> then rose and left. He was not arrested, Aww. though Rees uh, said that he did not know Richardson by name. He recognized him from previous meetings as the man mm. who sits in the front row. And yes, then leaves. something had to be done about this, but this he, man. So look, check it out. He leaves after the invocation and pledge. He doesn't come to the me- meetings because he cares about the city. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There's a suggestion that he actually goes in there to remain seated while in the front row yes, of this. The, well, as an adult, thing? you can't just find yourself a public prayer or a public pledge very often. Mm-hmm. I mean, the last time I was in a situation where uh, I felt pressured to stand for the pledge, it's been more than 10 years. Really? Yeah, just not something that I find myself. Maybe I'm wrong on this. A council but, meeting, huh? I, I, maybe maybe I just am not paying attention because okay. I certainly don't won't stand for it. Yeah, I won't either. And like I said, there's around here they're smart enough to leave it alone. I mean, if there were 150 people in this event, it's not like the guy is going to stand out if he stays seated during the people during the pledge. It sounds a lot like what happened to me and Sam Dodson uh, and another young lady a couple of years ago, a few years ago, actually 2010 was when this happened, the drinking game here in Keene, where we were in the city council chambers drinking from brown bottles uh, that had had labels removed from them and filled with water and new labels placed on them that said, not a beer. And just like in this story, the mayor stops the proceedings 10 minutes into the, uh, the event or 10 minutes into the council meeting and demands that we either leave or hand over the bottles to the police chief (laughs) and the police chief comes up and he tries to grab my bottle from me and i refuse to allow him to do that i told him i will not be consenting to a search and then he told me i will need to leave i will either need to consent to a search of the bottle or i'll need to leave and i told him i'm not leaving this is a public meeting and i don't have to consent to a search so i was arrested for disorderly conduct and ultimately those charges were dropped a year later right before trial well yep that's kind of how it would go right yep
And, of course, nothing was ever done. I was never made whole for the several hours of lost time that uh, sure. the inconvenience of having to miss the show that night or whatever it was that, that happened as a result of me being arrested. And, and clearly they were in the wrong. Otherwise, they would have gone forward with their prosecution of me. Yeah, that's, so it seems obvious. It's yet another example of using an arrest, or in this case, this man's story with the not standing for the pledge, the threat of an arrest, and this simply is, to get someone out of the way. And and this is something that the police will say. They've got this saying, I guess, is that you you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. Um, so you can yeah. beat the case, but you still had the inconvenience of being arrested, taken yeah. to jail, and all these other things. And having a damn uh, bail conditions over my head for nearly a year. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can tell us your story. What sort of ridiculous things have happened at city council meetings where you live? You're welcome to chime in here or bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Coming up, Uber facing a ban in Germany. I teased this one last night. We didn't get to it, so we'll tell you what's going on internationally. It's Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time Consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No No Pro risk free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no no. Great minds do think alike. (laughs) (laughs) Try No No Pro risk free by calling 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending aol to aol there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. 
Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So we open up the show tonight with Mark spilling the beans about a conversation (laughs) I had with one of the city councilors here in Keene, New Hampshire. Oh, uh, the beans! We do the program, and uh, there was a proposal that he made to remove the Bearcat, to get rid of it, this, uh, this police tank thing. Uh, that has been distributed to countless police departments all across the country. Keene was the first place where there was any significant pushback against the Bearcat. Ultimately, we did not succeed in getting that uh, to be blocked when it was first proposed. There was a, uh, I think it was Berkeley, actually, in California, that after Keene sort of led the way, Berkeley did successfully stop, the people in Berkeley did stop their city council from getting one of these things, so... It was nice to see that happen, at least even though it wasn't here. Now the proposal's been put back on the table. And according to one of the folks who attended the meeting, which was going on during this first hour of Free Talk Live, uh, quote, the bastards voted down the motion and then laughed. So doesn't sound like uh, Ian Freeman not attending made much of a difference on this issue. Well, I, th- I don't think that uh, the claim was that it's your attendance that really mattered as much as uh, like the support of the free keen folks. And no, no, that wasn't it. No, it was specifically me and Garrett Ian were the two names that uh, that were thrown out there. Okay. And uh, and and besides that, I you know I asked uh, the the counselor. I asked him, you know, what is it all right with you if I keep blogging about this? Because I'd already blogged about the story and sent out a uh, a press release this morning about it in fact including his contact information in there for the for the press to kind of pick up on the story and he was totally fine with that so he was okay with that well it didn't go anywhere no at least not at this point uh, we'll see what uh, what transpires further and we'll bring you the latest if anything uh, else transpires with this the toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free there's lots on the table here tonight as i mentioned uber is in trouble we've sort of been following the plight of Uber and Lyft, these companies that are what's called rideshare companies, which allows you to use an app on your phone or laptop, and you can call for a cab, basically. Um, I guess cab's the wrong term. These guys claim they're not cab companies. You call for someone who's in the area to come and pick you up from where you are, say the airport or your job, and then take you to where you want to go. And then you give them some money for it. Uh, I, I guess you pay through the app with uh, with a credit card, and then and share Uber, ride. And, yeah. Uber and Lyft uh, then pay the driver. And this is an amazing technology that's really kind of changing the way um, getting somewhere goes, especially in cities. These are where they're available. Larger cities typically have Uber and Lyft, and Uber's in trouble, man. They've been under fire. Lyft has been under fire with various different governments around the country. Some places are more friendly than others, and a lot of places are downright hostile. Uh, towards these these companies and their drivers. Some drivers are being pulled over. Uh, there was a story recently we read where a guy was pulled, a passenger, was yanked from the car by mm-hmm. police. Drivers have been ticketed up to $6,000 in some jurisdictions for operating a cab without a permit or some other nonsense yep. uh, charge where there's no victim. Uh, but they would like you to believe the old the old guard that are running the taxi businesses would like you to believe there are victims with Uber and Lyft that oh, they don't have the proper insurance and it could be dangerous in those cars. We need government to make sure that everything's safe with these vehicles because taxis never get in accidents and you know when they do then you're totally protected and everything's on the up and up. Well, I think that uh, the insurance conversation is an interesting one um, because I would agree that it's unlikely that many Uber drivers, that even I would uh, claim that there are probably fewer than half of Uber drivers get the proper insurance to be essentially running uh, a cab Mm -hmm. or something, you know, something like that to be giving rides uh, professionally for money. 
Um, but I would also claim that I bet you that number is uh, is less than half of pizza drivers, um, mm. radio ad sales people who do outside sales, and a variety of other ad sales people that do outside sales. I did outside ad sales for five, six years in Sarasota, Florida, and I've got to say I never had insurance to for somebody who was sort of doing this professionally. Um, I, I claim to drive a lot of miles per year, so I had the right insurance for the amount of mileage I put on because I didn't want them sort of checking my, oh, yeah, looks you said you drove 10,000 miles and you drive 25,000 miles a year. Mm. But I didn't have insurance for sort of sharing a ride, and I didn't ask. I believe that in a lot of cases you should ask for <laughs> forgiveness and not for permission. Maybe I'm wrong on uh, that with insurance. True. but. I didn't ask, hey, you know, if I work, if I happen to work for a company that sells at, and I sell advertising for them and they don't give me my own car to drive, do I have to pay extra insurance? Because, you know, what the answer is, it's yes, yes, you need extra insurance. We're an insurance company and you need extra insurance. So Here's I don't know. a story from Bloomberg.com. A German taxi organization won a fast track ruling that may halt the use of Uber Technologies ride hailing application in the country. Uber drivers don't have the necessary permits to carry passengers under German law, according to a Frankfurt uh, Frankfurt court in an emergency ruling dated August 25th. This is an emergency. <laughs> we have to put a stop to these people <laughs> giving people rides, citing evidence provided by Taxi Deutschland service Geschalft für Taxi Strahlen. <laughs> Something like that. Whatever. The Frankfurt case is one of at least four legal actions against the company in the country right now. Governments and regulators in cities around the world are restricting Uber's business on the grounds that it poses safety risks and unfairly competes with licensed taxi services. See, cabbies with permits can cost 200,000 euros for one of those permits. Whoa! Whoa! Almost. That's even higher than it is in like New York, isn't it? No, no, no New York's like close a to a million now. Okay, yeah. From the last I heard, uh, two hundred sixty-two. That's that breaks down to about two hundred sixty-two thousand U.S. dollars per each per cab. How the hell do you make money at that? I just don't understand. You just have to well, jack the rates up. You make so money. High. You make money because the government keeps everybody else out of God, business. So crazy. Uh, stage protests, uh, apparently, let's see, the taxi cabbies have staged protests in European cities, including London, Madrid, Paris, and Berlin. Uh, the company, which is also, I'm sorry, I pronounced that the, <laughs> yes, New, the Hampshire New Hampshire way. way. <laughs> Berlin is how you pronounce it, the international way. There's a Berlin, New Hampshire. Yeah. The company, which, which is... Which, by the way, for uh, you know all the bigoted reasons you could imagine, changed its name from Berlin um, at this onset of World War I because we were fighting the Hun at that point. <laughs> and then they changed it back? No. They just... It's Berlin. No, oh, you mean they changed the pronunciation? Berlin to Berlin. They changed the pronunciation. Okay. On purpose is the story. Gotcha. The company, which is also facing suits and legal threats in the United States, South Korea, India, the Netherlands, and the UK, will appeal and continue to operate in Germany, one of its fastest growing markets, said Uber in an emailed statement. Quote, we believe innovation and competition is good for everyone, riders and drivers. You cannot put the brakes on progress. Well, I love their attitude. I'm glad they're continuing on, and they've they've told their drivers they're going to stand behind them. If the drivers get cited, get some sort of ticket, that Uber will uh, will back them. You know, they'll provide the attorneys to nice. defend them. Uh, investors, including Goldman Sachs and Google Ventures, are putting money into burgeoning market uh, the burgeoning market for apps that let users order taxis and cars or share rides using their smartphones. Uber is based out of San Francisco, active in more than 40 countries, raised $1.2 billion in June, giving it a value of $17 billion. When the decision was issued under a fast-track procedure, the judges reviewed arguments submitted earlier by Uber to fend off such an order. Under the ruling, Taxi Deutschland, a Frankfurt-based association of German cab, cab, uh, cab dispatchers, can ask the court to impose a payment of as much as €250,000 each time Uber violates the ban. Taxi Deutschland will monitor Uber and will ask the court to impose sanctions, according to its spokeswoman. Uh, woman. She says, we're not afraid of our adversary because the law is on our side. Goldman Sachs and Google <laughs> can pour in as much money as they want. Even Uber has to abide by the law. If yeah, it, well, the, if the law is protectionist, it's just a crappy law. I'm not claiming it's not the law, but... Um, you know, there's been lots of bad laws. People from Germany should remember that. 
Let's see. According to the rest of the story here, uh, Hamburg traffic authorities told Uber in July to stop operating in the port city, saying transporting people without a license is against the law. The city's administrative court ruled that the wrong city agency issued the ban, and Hamburg can enforce the restriction while it reviews a challenge filed by the company. So uh, Berlin issued a ruling blocking the service in August, and a case over its enforcement is pending at administrative court in the German capital. The cities of Munich and Dusseldorf are also considering bans, and the city authorities say the service is illegal because the drivers offering rides need a cabbie license and are not properly insured. So it's the it's, same argument It's like everywhere. a story from the United States. Yeah. It's just it's, like a story from the United States. It's the same argument everywhere. Governments are the same everywhere. This is what they do. United States isn't a more free place than anywhere else. Cities all over the U.S. are doing the same crap to this poor company who I imagine would probably be able to service customers better had they not have to spend all this overhead on legal fees. I don't sure know what their hurt. attorney bills are like, but they've got to be a crazy portion of this company's budget. More coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. You take control. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com you got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's a realtor, Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.22 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,270 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $481. Antiwar.com reports Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko both confirmed yesterday that a ceasefire deal has been reached, though both sides differed about whose idea it actually was. Putin publicly laid out the terms of a seven-point peace plan for eastern Ukraine, with the first step being both sides ending their active offensive operations against one another. The goal is to finalize the deal on Friday. Poroshenko's description of the plan claimed Putin had a agreed to a deal with Ukraine, though the Kremlin issued a correction pointing out that Ukraine and Russia aren't actually at war and that the deal is to end the eastern Ukrainian conflict. Russia has been trying to negotiate an end to that war for months and has been pushing deals on federalism and increased regional autonomy as the key to ending the internal war. Analysts didn't see much chance of the deal actually ending the war, saying it would be difficult to sell peace inside Ukraine ahead of October's parliamentary elections. 
Russians. Ukraine's ultranationalists, who are increasingly politically important, have been pushing precipitous acceleration of the war. Ukraine's government had been spurning peace deals when the war was going well on their side, but seems to be changing their mind with a recent rebel counteroffensive reversing their gains. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Missouri Governor Jay Nixon on Wednesday formally lifted the state of emergency that had been declared in Ferguson weeks ago when the shooting death of an unarmed teenager by a police officer sparked sometimes violent demonstrations. Nixon said, Over the past week, we've seen students getting back to school, businesses reopening their doors, and folks getting back to their normal routines. Nixon declared a state of emergency on August 16th due to the unrest in the St. Louis suburb following the August August 9th shooting of Michael Brown by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. Demonstrators have continued to protest in Ferguson, calling for prosecutors to charge Wilson in Brown's death and for police to change tactics. There have been no violent clashes in about two weeks like those in which police in riot gear fired tear gas to quell crowds and made scores of arrests. Nixon said a return of peace to Ferguson streets was a testament to efforts by community and faith leaders working alongside state and local law enforcement officers. A county grand jury has begun hearing evidence about the police shooting, and the U.S. Justice Department has opened a separate investigation. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 the AP reports a suburban Detroit man who killed an unarmed woman on his porch was sentenced Wednesday to at least 17 years in prison after telling the victim's family he would carry guilt and sorrow forever. Wayne County Judge Dana Hathaway followed the recommendation of prosecutors in the case of Theodore Wafer, who was convicted of second-degree murder in the death of 19-year-old Renisha McBride. Wafer opened his front door and shot McBride through a screen door on November 2nd. He said he was awakened by pounding before dawn and feared for his life. A jury rejected his self-defense claim. The judge said, although the evidence clearly showed that Miss McBride made some terrible choices that night, none of them justified taking her life. I do not believe you're a cold-blooded murderer or that this case had anything to do with race or that you're some sort of monster. I do believe that you acted out of some fear, but mainly anger and panic. Wafer told the judge that he killed a woman who was too young to leave this world, adding, I will carry that guilt and sorrow forever. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after Seattle area consulting firm Brink and Tiller received a resume from Corey Wilhelm, a college graduate with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Communications, Human Resources Director Robert Bradshaw immediately fast-tracked Wilhelm's application and spoke with The Onion about this exceptional candidate. Well, the second I saw Corey's resume, I knew I had to send it straight up to our CEO. I mean, we're talking about an applicant who not only got into the University of Washington School of Communication, but also managed to graduate in four years with a Bachelor of Arts. This kid's only 22, but according to his resume, he already has experience in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. We're really going to have to move fast to get this guy. Bradshaw went on to say that company heads could barely believe the candidate had two years of experience working at his college newspaper and had even taken a full four years of high school Spanish. Since receiving the application, Bradshaw claims the company has made numerous attempts to reach Wilhelm. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. 
and Mark. Hey, join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Totally free. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Now, Mark, uh, there's been a story in the news over the last several days, and I don't know if there have been any updates on it within the last 24 hours or so. I haven't looked. But uh, there was big headlines earlier in the week about this this hacker uh, that has hacked into the Apple iCloud, as yeah. it's called. And uh, for those that don't know, the cloud is a storage technology where instead of storing things on your phone or on your computer, you store them on the internet, you store them on the cloud, which is basically just you know a set of servers out there somewhere that stores files for you and then syncs them to your device and that kind of thing. So turns out what was happening was, shocker, people were taking pictures of themselves naked and or in sexual positions or taking video of sexual things and posting them to their cloud, which uh, they thought was private and should have been. Turns out there was a security flaw, and Apple didn't patch the flaw in time or whatever. Somebody found the flaw, and they exploited that flaw, and they got access to what it was ostensibly hundreds of celebrity accounts. Yep. And were able to download pictures of uh, of naked celebrities, and now the world's yeah. going crazy. Yeah, and people like pictures of naked celebrities. That's, uh, you know, that's... That that that's it. I mean, there's lots of pictures, lots of demand for that. Uh, let's see. One of them was uh, Jennifer Lawrence, who is the, uh, the the lead actress in the Hunger Games, as I understand it. Yep, I I saw a picture of her. Now I thought there was a great quote today coming from a Ariana Grande or Grandy. I'm not sure how she pronounces. it. I don't it. know either. She's a singer of some sort. Something like that. I, I you know I don't know who she is, but I'll, I'll tell you what. She's got chutzpah. She says she's much cuter than the faked le- um, than leaked. Nude pictures. Fake leaked nude pictures is her claim. So she's saying that had they been pictures of her, they'd have been even better. You wish saying. you got some <laughs> naked pictures of me, Buster. <laughs> you know, like she's a, an attractive lady. That would be a really good day for you. Yeah. Yeah. She's an attractive lady. She so seems fine. Yeah. There, there have been uh, no shortage of attractive women, but, uh, you know, being clever in the face of adversity, the, there's a shortage of that. And so I'm yeah. I'm proud of her for that uh, that quote. Good, well, good one, for her. One of the responses uh, on this has been anger, right? Like, you know, that this has happened and we're going to get lawyers involved and we're going to do something about this. What else would we do, right? And I posted uh, on my Facebook page about this and basically said, look, if you don't want the pictures to get out there, just don't take the pictures. It's excellent advice. And that's not and, – and then I was uh, I was told I was victim shaming. And I, I'm sorry. That's not victim shaming. Look. Well, I don't know if you're victim shaming or not. Because these but, were – people were victims of a hacking, right? Like right. they didn't put these well, out there intentionally. It well, wasn't even the boyfriend, like the ex-boyfriend, you know, the, what do they call those, the revenge porn, where yeah. the ex-boyfriend uh, or girlfriend will post pictures to one of these revenge porn sites to kind of well, get back at somebody. It wasn't that either. Well, this it was it was worse. It was um, people not taking responsibility for the pictures that they took by, by putting them up on this centralized server. Well, they figured it'd be secure. I mean, you don't think that when you take a picture and put it on the cloud that it's going to be uh, hacked, but Ladies and happened. gentlemen, when you trust large or Organizations like Apple and Google Home and Depot. these or- organizations, they are going to lose your information. Yeah. They're going okay. to lose it. Whether it's your credit card information or your nudie pictures. I'm sorry, history isn't on your side. You can claim ignorance, and you may be ignorant, but the ignorance is your fault. Right. I mean, it's not blaming the victim to give someone advice for the future. To no, say, Look, I don't think it is. If you don't take the picture, you can't lose them. You can't have them fall into the hands of someone who you don't want them to have. In, indeed, I or mean, you wh- don't want to have them. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's is, isn't it obvious? <laughs> I mean, it's, it seems like it should be obvious. And if you take these pictures, then you really shouldn't be so upset. I mean, there's always a good chance that. Whoever it was, the ex that you were with. Because in a lot of cases, these pictures are taken for the benefits of somebody that they, they're, they're in love with. Somebody's and- career is getting drop kicked to the moon right now um, over the over these pictures. I don't know who it is. I'm not paying enough attention. There's a fairly large group of, uh, of people that uh, that this is affecting. But so. I, I hear Den- Jennifer Lawrence's name over and over again. She's probably one of the bigger names on if the If she handles this with a plob. She is not. 
I don't know. I mean, She's I'm, allegedly I'm not one of the ones who has uh, uh, has threatened attorneys. I don't know. Maybe that's a plob, and maybe it's not. It, it really this is about uh, managing the issue, and you know there are people out there whose careers uh, have been revitalized, vitalized, <laughs> um, uh, just from sex videos and things that's like true. that. So. This could be great. I don't remember who's... I saw one of these pictures. Uh, somebody was in the studio looking at them, mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, okay. And I thought, eh, not bad, right? There's it's, a naked woman. Well, you need to understand is when you see Playboy or uh, you know porn is you have body models. These are people who yeah. have really great bodies, and they do what they can with their face, right? Um, it's awesome to have a really great body and a really great face, but to have a really great face, the ability to act, and then on top of that, look good with your clothes off, is pretty difficult. There are plenty of people, men and women in this world, who look better with clothes on than they mm -hmm. look with their clothes off. And that's fine if you're going to have a job where you keep your clothes on. It's not so fine if you have a job where you keep your clothes off. In a lot of cases, Whoever this was, and I don't remember which one it was, they, they, you know, they have apparently all three. Good on them! Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think that uh, if you're going to be taking naked pictures of yourself that you should be so upset about it. I mean, really, there's a good chance that your lover is going to not love you at some point in the future or going to be upset at you. And that's why these revenge well, porn websites are so uh, are so popular. If so. you're going to take nude pictures of yourself, first, don't use an iPhone. Um, secondly... Take the pictures, store them on a uh, thumb drive that you keep in that safe or whatever you have in the house, the firebox, whatever place you keep. What's the your... point of that? If the, the, Because the... you don't want them to get out. Then why? Okay. Look, the reason why people take these pictures is usually to probably share them with somebody they care about. I'm not that sure that that's about. the case. When you're talking about a, a you know somebody who makes their living on the camera then they may very well just be looking at what they look like. That's I have possible. never I've never done this. That's, I look at myself in the mirror when I get out of the shower. I go, oh, God, God I'm fat. Um, so, but uh, so I don't take these pictures. But, you know, they might be able to they might be taking the pictures just to look at them and say, hey, what do I it look is like? It's possible that uh, another option is that they are collecting them. You're right. I mean, that, that's certainly a possibility. But typically, when at least when you hear about these stories, because usually it's not a hacking that results in this. Usually it's some lover who puts them online. Uh, that does happen often. Lover. And in that case, usually those pictures, at least, were taken and explicitly shared with that lover. I don't right? have that any— That was why they were taken. The lover went on vacation or something, and the person took some na naked pictures to keep him tied, uh, keep the lover tied it over— while he or she was uh, was on vacation. I don't have any advice on how to properly take naked pictures that you're going to give people. I don't have it. Um, you know, I, I would claim that you can probably do as well uh, with pictures, of, you know, in some level of undress mm -hmm. that you're giving that aren't going to be nearly as compromising and that that is the wise thing to do in this circumstance. I don't. I mean, I don't know. So the Los Angeles Times here, Mark, and you've admitted to uh, to looking at one of these pictures. They say one of the people there in their opinion column says you shouldn't click on nude celebrity photos or something else we've talked about in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. beheading porn. I see. I wouldn't call that porn, but okay. This is a story from uh, Pat Morrison, is the reporter or the opinionist over at LATimes.com. Maybe you couldn't resist, writes Pat. After all, what would it hurt? And who would know? So you clicked and watched that video of an American man in an orange jumpsuit getting his head cut off. Well, no, I watched. I didn't want to watch. Uh, and I didn't I watch. I didn't either. I tried until to avoid it. We were on the air talking about it, and then I realized, you know what? I have a job to do. I have a job to inform people of, mm -hmm. you know, what is news. I think American foreign policy is important, and that this video is part of that. So to suggest that I shouldn't uh, look at it and report on it and have an opinion really is something entirely different. Or maybe you clicked on a different site to have a glance, just a glimpse, honest, at one of those glamorous actresses, naked. In the latter case, it makes you a party to a theft. In the former, it makes you the audience for mass murderers. We'll come back with more of this opinion piece. You can share your thoughts, whether it's the beheadings or the naked pictures or whatever's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since.
If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. How dare you and who do you think you are? I mean, it's my life. It's my business. I should be able to run it how I want to, and my customers should be able to make the choice for themselves as to whether or not they want to do business with me. And they should be able to make that choice yeah. based on uh, the quality of my product or my reputation or the fact that I've got third-party certification or whatever factors they deem important. If I'm doing business and you don't trust me or you think I'm shady, then you don't have to do business with me. In fact, you can tell other people what you think about my business and my practices and Maybe they also will join you in not doing business with me. There's no need for government regulations out there. The marketplace can handle third-party certification of various different products and services to where people who are concerned about whether or not the business they're dealing with is trustworthy can check with a verifiable resource that, indeed, this is a trustworthy individual or a trustworthy company that you're doing business with. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. You just dial toll free here. And bring up whatever you want. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Express coin. What is it? Express coin is the place to go get cryptocurrencies. Whether they're Bitcoin, which you probably heard a great deal about, or some of the other lesser-known cryptocurrencies, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, whether you're in the United States or Canada, they are the best choice. They pride themselves on their customer service. Um, so much so that they've just recently designed the, redesigned their website uh, to give you more uh, support on the back end. Um, they're completely legal. They're licensed money services business. 
and completely very inexpensive. It was some of the, one of the lowest rates we've been able to find anywhere. Lowest rate you've been able to find, Ian? Yes. There you go. Uh, easy to use and fast is if you go make a deposit in a local credit union in your town, you can have your bitcoins by the next business day. It's expresscoin.com. Use coupon code FTL to get up to forty dollars of uh, bitcoin or whatever express uh, whatever cryptocurrency you want it for no fee. So get under $40, and there's no fee at all with coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. And thanks for everybody who's been using it. ExpressCoin uh, was, by the way, uh, just talking to them today. And they love the business that we send to them. Oh, fantastic. Good to know. Uh, so LATimes.com, Pat Morrison has an opinion piece saying that you are a naughty person. You should not click on nude celebrity photos or beheading porn uh, online, the beheading videos that have been discussed recently. We'll get into the rest of the opinion piece here mm -hmm. in moments. Pizza Guy is with us first, listening in Fargo, North Dakota. Hello, Pizza Guy. Yeah, I was recently uh, inspired by a conversation you guys were having about condescension the other day, and I just kind of wanted to touch on that topic a little bit here. All right, sure. Uh, I don't think yeah, I like so, your you tone. Know, I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Liberty Phoenix or somebody was saying how everybody says he, he sounds condescending and he doesn't know what to do. And I actually, in my teenage years, had a lot of problems with that where everybody said that uh, I thought I was so much smarter than everybody else and I was always talking down to them. Um, and what I kind of came to realize over the years is that I am smarter than everyone. <laughs> and and by treating them like my peers, uh, they felt like I was talking above them or over their heads. And that led to condescension. Uh, uh, being, being condescending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, what kind of, and I think this might be a lot of people's problems who end up being told that they're condescending is that what they're really trying to do is assume, because I had always assumed, I didn't realize that most people uh, are less intelligent than I am. It just was something that never clicked because I'm a solipsistic narcissist to boot. Uh, so why wouldn't everybody else be exactly like me? And think, and, and I mean, if you think about it, if you're even in the top third, of intelligence, of people. Most people you meet will be uh, less intelligent than you. Well, I have to say right? this uh, conversation has not really forwarded the idea of not being condescending. What you're saying is you can't help it. You're saying that any time uh, you talk to somebody, you condescend, whether you are talking above them or talking down to them. You, you truly do believe you're better than everyone else. Well, what I'm saying is that sometimes the only way to avoid being condescending is to do what you may believe is talking down to people, because by bringing yourself down to their level and talking down at their level, then they don't feel talked down to. When uh, in fact, in reality, I they can't are. Relate. I can't That's relate to this, but Mark, I'm sure can, because I don't oh, yeah. believe I am uh, any better than anyone else. But Mark certainly believes he is. Most people, uh, I think that the best way to communicate with them is to, to try to keep a smile on your face. Not a big, fake cheerleader smile, but... Grunts, you know, smoke signals? Is that no, what you're getting at there? Y y you, you speak to them as though you're happy to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to explain the things you're saying, because there's so many terms out there. And it that just are, seems like you're patronizing. You have to explain what you're saying, um, no matter what. If, if somebody says, look, look, I... I after you've explained two or three different things to them, they suggest that you up the level a little bit. Fine, up the level a little bit and just let me know if I need to explain something to you. That's fine. Um, you know, my my uh, practice of dealing with Ian by trying to uh, make him smarter by yelling at him is a really bad one. But it is the sadly the system that, that I have developed over time for Ian specifically. And I wonder, really, really wonder to myself many times whether he does this crap on purpose or whether he's really, you know, that dense. What are you talking about? <laughs> right, that, exactly. Um, you know, like he went to the smart kid's school. you think he'd be able to swim in like the, you know, somewhere near the deep end. But, you know, not, sometimes not at all. Uh, but it's, it's I think you've got... To, what's that? It's just hypersolipsism. And, what does that and mean? I, I don't I know what that means. Uh, that means that, that uh, basically that you feel the, the way you view and experience the world is the same way that everybody else views and experiences the world. And so you have a hard idea I don't feel thinking that, that other people can think. 
okay. Well, it, 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 it seems for me, and I've been listening to you guys for a long time, that, that when people don't, don't see it your way, that, that you, you don't understand. And, and that's why you don't understand uh, when you're being condescending, because you feel, and because I make these same effects all the time, you feel like you're talking to them at their level, right? And they feel like they're being talked down to. And you say, well, what's the big deal? I'm not being condescending because your intention, and you know your intention, and because you're a solipsist, you believe that other people would naturally know what your intention is because you, you whether you know it or not, can't fathom that, that they have a thought that they don't know what you're thinking. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I think it's... I, I guess I understand where you're coming from, but I certainly don't have any preconceived notion that all people think the same way as I do. That's ridiculous. All people are very different. Uh, people have come to the table with different experiences, different life uh, dramas and stories, and they all have very different ways of interpreting life. And so I don't know what make, made you think that way, but uh, I don't. I often find the condescension thing is a uh, a refuge for those that don't wish to think about the topic you're looking at. Now, I think there's a great argument coming from the That's other true. side that people that there's no such thing as a dumb person, right? Like that there's people with different abilities in different areas. I don't know how to articulate which areas it is that I believe are important and in you know a given conversation and which ones aren't. I think that that's I think it's an interesting conversation, right? Like there's supposedly nine areas of intelligence. Then I read some study out of I think it was Nova or something like that. I read a lot of science magazines when I was in prison because I didn't have anything else to do. Um, and you know there that there apparently some Harvard study had said there were 17 areas of of intelligence, and that was some time ago. I may have the number wrong, but when you're talking about somebody who's performing in if there's 20 areas of intelligence and you're talking about somebody who performs in the top 5% of those areas and that if you, of course, claim that a person can have only one area of intelligence, which is ludicrous, then you would have everybody would be a genius in some particular area. This Temple Garin gal who uh, you know believed that she thought like animals and believes that she thinks like animals or whatever, you know, maybe she's a genius at designing slaughterhouses, which is what she's uh, hmm. you know done to some extent. That's great, but you know she may not be a real genius at uh, you know discussing other people's emotions. Any final thoughts, Pizza Guy? Go ahead. Well, yeah, just in my personal experience, and so this is what helped me is that. When I started talking down to people is when they stopped telling me I was condescending. And it helped when I read the book uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which I kind of read as like the most evil black book of vile disgustingness about being condescending to people that I had ever read. But Pizza Guy, thanks for the call, the man. I appreciate it. There's more coming up. We can talk about the, that book in moments. Hi, I'm Phil Grandy from Phil's Gang. If you've been nervous about investing in the current stock market, then you need to listen up. Phil's Gang is having a free webinar on Saturday, September 13th. That's going to be at noon Eastern time. You're going to learn how to invest in this type of market, not just the stock market, but you're going to be investing in yourself. Don't miss it. To sign up, go to LearnStocksForFree.com. That's LearnStocksForFree.com or call 877-600-4264. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45, non-tobacco user, could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five 
$500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You take control here. It's all free. You can tell us how you feel about the proposal here from the Los Angeles Times that says that you really shouldn't be looking at nudie celebrity pictures that have been leaked or beheading porn, as they call it here, the beheading videos or the alleged beheading videos. Yeah, I don't watch that stuff for prurient reasons, and I'm I'm honestly um, I'm ins- insulted that they would call it that. Well, the term prurient has not been used yet in this particular article, but well, maybe uh, I'm not I'm not looking at uh, beheading porn uh, as they as they call it these videos of uh, beheadings because I like it. They're not saying that your motives matter here, Mark. Let me get then into the story. Then it's not porn. Let me get into the story here uh, in just a moment. But also want to let you know about how to get a free pound of coffee. You go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get signed up over there. Yeah, if you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, you will get. A pound of the most delicious, shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica bean coffee you have tasted. It is delicious, excellent coffee. And for every uh, 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we're able to give another microloan to another family to be able to get the things that they need. Now we're probably going to be going. We are going to be going through a different organization to do that here in the near future. Oh, we uh, you told me about that. Yep, we're switching to Kiva. I'm excited by that because Kiva was the first uh, microloan group I ever heard about. I remember we talked about them uh, like a decade ago. On yeah, Free it's, Talk it's been a long time, and I like them too. They're you know they're they're not religious, so that's uh, something. It's international, like Free Talk Lives International, and uh, you know I've been with them for many years. I mean, mm-hmm. as like five or six years, I've been doing microloans. You've been providing money for microloans. I have, um, and so now I have an opportunity to, to hook up the uh, the Buzzbox program with that. That's so. cool. Anyway, it's coffee.freetalklive.com. Try a pound. You pay the shipping. We'll get you a pound of coffee. Continue the subscription, help people around the world live in better conditions. You drink coffee already, you can help people 
get a hand up instead of a handout. The editorial piece here, the opinion piece at the L.A. Times says that you shouldn't be watching the naked uh, pictures or videos of the celebrities that have leaked out over the last few days, and you shouldn't be watching the beheading videos. They, cl- they claim that in the case of the pictures of the celebs, it makes you a party to a theft. In the former, it makes you the audience for mass murderers. You can watch all well, the online porn that you can afford, says the author, and play all the realistically violent video games you can stomach. This is different. Of course people are curious. I'm curious about what heroin would be like, but that doesn't mean I'll be gratifying that curiosity. Yeah, well, the reason that you wouldn't choose not to do heroin has a lot less to do has a lot more to do with uh, you know what its ill effects on your life than uh, what, you know, it's illegal. But isn't the isn't this person uh let's see, it's Pat Morrison. I don't know if that's a guy or, or not, but anyway, isn't Pat here making a point that it you know, if you're watching, if you're looking at the uh, the pictures of the celebrities, that you're party to a theft. I don't believe that's the case. Um, Aren't you receiving stolen property? Well, what is st- – <laughs> first off, um, everything's stolen. I mean, everything you have is st- – uh, th- there's so many things that are stolen. Look at the jewelry we've got. Gold's been around a long time. They wrote about it in the Bible, mm-hmm. right? So unless you uh, got gold from land that was never stolen from anyone – uh, All right, now you're really reaching here. I'm I mean, not reaching. What, what, what? What's the point? I, I mean, got, first off, if you're going to talk about what's stolen, let's talk about what's stolen, okay? These are things that have actually been stolen from somebody. These pictures from these celebrities, they aren't missing their nipples because I'm looking at them, okay? Mm-hmm. They haven't lost anything, so the claim that I have stolen something is tenuous at best. But there's a breach. I mean, there's been a security breach here. Okay, this there's hacker, a security breach. This hacker got into Apple's system. They pulled down these photos. So that's not theft? Security breach is, um, you know... Or is it just working the system? The person... Is it, is it because Apple left a bug in this, the software? Just You're just exploiting a bug and you're working the system? I don't know the answer to, as to whether or not, um, you know, it seems to me that that's vandalism and, and whatever. If you want to call it theft, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But the it's, responsibility for theft mm-hmm. comes from the person who did the stealing. Either that or we're all guilty of theft. I have oh. spent a lot of time thinking about this, Ian, and the best I can come up with is... You're guilty of theft if you steal something, and yeah. you're, if you're if, if you're a party to it, I would then never it's receiving stolen property. Which I would is never. A different crime. Yeah, that's a different crime, but is it a crime in a moral sense? And I'm not sure it is entirely. Only if you know it's stolen. I don't know that that's the case either. Look, you have to know when you receive stolen property. I know that the land I live on and the land you live on was stolen from Abenaki Indians. I'm not responsible for that. Oh, now you're not responsible. A minute ago, I was responsible for uh, I didn't receiving say you were responsible. Pro- I'm not. This is not my opinion. This is the opinion of the author at L.A. Times. He's saying it makes you a party to a theft, which can be an accessory, not that you're the actual thief. No well, one's saying that. I don't know whether he's talking this- about a legal sense or whether he's talking about a moral sense. I could care less Maybe about both. a, a legal know. claim, and I only care about his moral claim. A legal claim is just a bunch of liars, paid liars, as we call them in down in in the in the South. They're liars instead of lawyers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I don't care what they say. It's it's beyond me. I don't care. But if you're talking about a moral sense, let's have a conversation about what stealing is. Back to the story. Uh, he says the videos of the beheadings of journalists James Foley and Stephen Sotloff are both indecently intimate invasions into the last moments of each man's life and propaganda. Foley's family implored us, saying, quote, don't watch the video. Don't share it. That's not how life should be, unquote. YouTube took it down, but like a hydra, it sprang up in many other places. The naked celebrity images are stolen as surely as if someone swiped them out of a Hermes purse. The much-googled phrase celebrity nude photo leak wrongly— Is a Hermes purse an expensive purse? I'm going to guess it is. Okay. Wrongly implies the celebrities or their agents released them. The cheeky web gossip Perez Hilton posted some of the photos and was shamed by his followers into taking them down and apologizing to actress Jennifer Lawrence. When we click on the links to these pictures, we implicitly endorse the means used to get them and encourage people who make money or reputations from the hits to go do more of the same. Is there an argument there? Yes. There is an argument that if you uh, look at 
pictures of naked celebs mm -hmm. that you then give these people that work for basically clickbait um, that you know it's, it's all about the clicks you do give them um, a reason to do what they do sure the British publication. It's the same argument that drug users are guilty for the actions of drug dealers and, you know, blaming poor people for wanting a better life in foreign countries and a whole variety of other things that, that are claimed. Um, I think that it's a, it's a tenuous claim at Well, it best. sounds very – I tend to agree with you on that. It sounds very similar to the claim that, you know, voting endorses the system. You know, by, by voting that you're somehow totally giving your your say so and your go ahead through to the entire it's even sadder structure. than that I'm sorry voting you can vote no on everything that you see come before you, you can vote for the smaller government choice sometimes it's very 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 hard but um, many most of the time I'd say that no but what I'm saying is that the argument of the anti-voting crowd is on a lot of a lot of times one of their main arguments is that by voting, even if you vote for the libertarian or the voluntarist or whatever, the anarchist, uh, that somehow you're endorsing the system. That they take this – there's this huge logical jump going from the act of voting and your own motivations for it to what they believe that your motivations are or that your actions are in somehow in some way endorsing. Same I understand sort of what you're here. saying, and you're wrong, and let me point out why. You're when saying my you, comparison is wrong. Your comparison sucks, and here's why. When you click on something and see the picture of the naked um, lady who's uh, mm -hmm. famous, you give quantifiably one click to people who make money on clicks. When you vote— That's not necessarily true. Well, you could, you could depending on where you get it. Depending on where you go get it or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, many people are going to look at it. I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked at these pictures. I don't care about these pictures. Um, oh, my goodness. Here's somebody famous that's naked. Mm -hmm. I'd rather some see somebody, uh, you know, naked that looks good naked rather than somebody I just don't care. But um, – when you vote, you aren't necessarily voting for the system. When you click, you are necessarily clicking for the system. But you're wrong because you're not necessarily clicking to uh, benefit any one system. If you can somehow These avoid the clicking the system, then I would say the argument is invalid. Yes, you are invalid because uh, there are all kinds of locations where one can go and get these photos. 4chan, of course, was the location where they were first released, and there's no, you know, there's no clickbaiting going on there. Uh, you can get them through the torrent sites. There's more coming up here, 855, 450 free. What do you think? This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. Uh, Mark, was there some news about the Marijuana Investment Conference? Yeah, thanks for reminding me on that. It's uh, something important to uh, point out. Apparently, the organizer has um, had some very rapid onset of some terrible form of cancer. Oh, my. Um, that was just called yesterday about this, actually during the show. I didn't get the message until after the show. So they have, for whatever reason, gone and canceled the event hmm. because of this. I don't you know, I don't have any specifics beyond that. The message was rather short. I don't know. I take it folks should be expecting a refund if they have purchased tickets. In I, I, Yes, that was the indication that I got. So... Um, you know, I'm sorry that that uh, worked out the way that it did. Mm. I, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm not going to uh, the marijuana investment conferences after all. Darn. At the end of the week. Sounded like it was going to be a good event. Hopefully, he'll uh, he or she will get well soon. It's a he. Yeah. Hopefully, he'll get well soon and maybe do it next year. I don't know what the deal is. We'll find out. They they, they claim to be doing the event uh, in October mm -hmm. or something. Something more is going to happen, but I don't know the specifics. All right. Well, if we hear anything new, we'll certainly let you know on that. Uh, should we give the website out anyway for folks who want to, you know, if they uh, they need to go and check yeah, out As a the reminder, details. it's a marijuana investment conferences.com. I imagine they'll be posting some sort of details about uh, about that if they haven't. I imagine them, so. they will, yeah. All right, so a uh, toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Los Angeles Times author Ch -ch -ch Pat Morrison saying, hey, you shouldn't be looking at those pictures of those celebrities. You shouldn't be watching the videos, the alleged beheading videos that we've talked about here this week on Free Talk Live and a couple weeks ago as well. Uh, back to the story here. The argument is that when you click on the links to the pictures that in endorses implicitly the means used to get them, and encourage people who make money or reputations from the hits to do more of the same. Well, whether or not you click on on them is, you know, certainly not going to ultimately decide whether or not somebody else hacks into some iCloud account. But I guess the argument is that if if only everyone wouldn't click on these pictures, then no one would hack the pictures anymore, is essentially what this person is saying, which of course is ridiculous, because to convince everyone to not click on nude celebrity photos or it be just ain't gonna happen. beheading videos just isn't going to happen. But is there a, uh, you know, a decent point 
that this person's making that it is in some way wrong to do so. And the you know maybe it's persuasive that this is somehow encouraging theft or encouraging digital breaking and entering in the case of the uh, the nude photos. Let me go on here. So they talk about how Perez Hilton, apparently this kind of entertainment blogger, had posted some of the photos and was shamed into taking I, them down. For the longest time, thought this was Paris Hilton had gotten a real job. Yeah. I didn't know. No, somebody else. In fact, I think it's a guy. Uh, the British publication The Spectator calls the Islamic State images beheading porn, talking about the videos of the people allegedly being beheaded. And there's no shortage of them, thanks to the Islamic State and its propaganda effort. They may inflame, they may titillate, they may intimidate. But inevitably, they coarsen and degrade. And isn't that giving the Islamic State what it wants? Giving the Islamic Islamic State what they want is, well, that's that's a really tough question. Um, what they want is they want the United States out of the Middle East. So Clicking on nudie videos or uh, beheading, beheading videos isn't going to stop that. Well, it, uh, you know, do I want to give them what they want? I guess I do want to give them what they want because I, mm-hmm. I don't think the United States has any business in the Middle East. So uh, I think that, yes, uh, I, I want to give them what they want, but the clicking on the video doesn't have anything to do with that. Toll-free number is 855-453. Can't I make this argument that if uh, pe- that if these reporters didn't go to the Middle East in the first place, uh, they wouldn't be there and they wouldn't be giving the Islamic State what they want? I mean, there's, a, there's a good argument to be made here that ultimately this is all a big waste of time, that uh, that this, this uh, nudie thing with the celebrities was top headline, at least on the Drudge Report it was, for, mm-hmm. for at least a day. And it was major headlines for, you know, two days after that. I don't Like I said, I don't know what the update is today. I guess you said Ariana Grande has said something about those are fake pictures and she would look better if they were real pictures. Yeah. Um, s- I look so much better than that, So I mean, suggestion. It, to some extent, it's a, a commentary. The fact that people are so obsessed with this and that the news media is picking up on that is a commentary of how vapid perhaps society can be how celebrity obsessed Mm -hmm. uh people can be but ultimately there is i think some there are some interesting issues to be discussed within this particular news story one of them being the idea that you are responsible for your security and if you trust somebody like apple or google or whoever home depot target we're talking about credit card info for instance if you trust anybody else with your security then it's out of your hands and you just have to trust them and hope that they get it right and maybe you'll luck out. Maybe you won't get hacked. But maybe you will. And there's nothing you can ultimately do if you aren't taking your own steps to secure things. So, Mark, you had talked about if you have pictures and you want them to be secure, put them on some sort of an encrypted device, put them on a, an encrypted uh, file even, folder. Well, and, even if it's not encrypted, if you just keep it on a thumb drive and you're safe, you'll be better off. Right, uh, or encrypted on the thumb drive in the in the safe. That's Either a better way. choice. So, but my point being that you have to go through the steps necessary to protect your data, whether that data is naked pictures, your Bitcoin wallet, or you know documents important speaking, to your business. Speaking of which, I was I was just thinking about mentioning this, and then you brought it up. You and I trusted an organization that sh- we should have trusted early on in Bitcoin. We, we had got hosed. Yeah, we had what is now probably thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin stolen from us in the mybitcoinwallet.com debacle. Mm. And this was just what they were called. I'd forgotten their name. This was just a website. Not they weren't a sponsor or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just a website where you could put your Bitcoins. Let's put some Bitcoins here. Let's put the Bitcoins here. And essentially what you did is (laughs) we gave Bitcoins to we gave money to somebody who didn't. It was a scam. We didn't know. It was a scam. And they just took it from us. That's what happened. Thousands of dollars worth. Buyer now. beware, as they say. But here's another angle to this story. Uh, there's multiple people that were hacked in this uh, celebrity hacking. One of them is an Olympic gymnast. Many, most of them were celebrities as far as like oh, movies. Yes. Movies and TV shows and things. But Michaela Maroney was met, uh, one of many whose nude photos or alleged nude photos. Talented young lady. Uh, she's 18 now, and uh, apparently she had originally claimed these were fake, but now she's changed her story and she's admitting they were real and saying that, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you shouldn't have these because uh, they were taken when she was under the age of 18. Now, I've got to say, um, you know, what the one thing that I get from this is sort of the shame that she felt about taking these pictures. She must have felt shame if she lied, right? Mm. Because 
I don't feel she should feel shame about that. I'm just imagining these pictures are completely just naked pictures as opposed to some kind of weird, uh, you know, porn kind of mm -hmm. thing. I'm just imagining these are naked pictures. There's nothing wrong in my mind with taking naked pictures of yourself. Letting them out of your sight and things like that, unadvisable. I would suggest not taking the pictures. But if you choose to do it, I get it. A young woman, uh, you know, growing into herself may want to see what somebody might look at from a third party. I get it. Nothing wrong with it. She shouldn't feel shame. I think it's terrible that she feels shame over this. Right. And, of course, they have... Uh her attorney has sent out letters to porn.com informing them that uh, she was under the age of 18. Reddit has pulled down uh, the subreddits where these photos were being posted. And uh, and so they're claiming this is child pornography, which, of course, it's not, in my opinion, at least. If they are nude photos, then they're not porn. In, I think that you have to have some sort of sexual thing going on in a photo for it to be pornography. And the idea that, uh, you know, someone who was 17 and six months or however old she was at the time these pictures were taken, the idea that the, you know, picture in a, in a shower or something like that is somehow porn, right, I because, disagree with. Well, I think that a, a good thing to point out is, is that it doesn't matter what you think. Um, can families uh, take, nudist families, can they take pictures of their kids they can. at events? And the answer is yes. So if you think this is porn, you're going to need to prove that. You mm -hmm. have made a criminal accusation, and what you have said is slanderous unless, or is libelous? Libelous, yeah. unless you can prove it. So watch your tongue, people, because the very laws that you wish to enact, people, will come back and stab you through your throat. Well, I think it's interesting that Michaela actually came out and admitted these were real because ultimately she may be admitting herself into criminal charges. I mean, we've seen case after case where teenagers are charged with manufacturing child pornography for just taking naked pictures of themselves. Now, maybe if they were to actually go to trial, they could defeat those charges because it's not child porn. It's not porn of any sort if it's just naked pictures. But uh, they, nobody ever goes to trial because they get scared. They're felony charges or whatever. Yeah, and they Nobody take wants the, a felony charge, that's the, for sure. They take the plea deal. So it makes me wonder, is Michaela Maroney going to be treated like the average teenager? The answer is no. And charged with be. manufacturing child pornography for admitting that she took her own naked pictures. And what do you think? Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. At the Home Depot, buy one or more pallets of GAF Royal Sovereign three-tab shingles and save up to 20%. Let's raise the roof, but lower the cost with bulk pricing on GAF, America's number one shingle, featuring advanced protection technology. This is worth shouting from the rooftops. Let's do this. Up to 20% off one or more pallets of select GAF shingles. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Valid through September 17th, U.S. only. See store for details. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, Buzzbox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. 
online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,267, silver opened at $19.14, and Bitcoin is trading around $478.87. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillforTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, earlier this week, the Travis County Democratic Party held a forum on police brutality and Austin Police Department's use of deadly force policy. The panel included APD Chief Art Acevedo, Austin Police Association President Wayne Vincent, NAACP Chapter President Nelson Linder, and Police Monitor Margo Frazier, among others. During the panel, the topic of body cameras arose. As reported by KXAN, Chief Acevedo told the audience that he will present the council a proposal within the next year for the cameras. Now, this isn't the first time the prospect of cameras for Austin police officers has been on the table. Back in 2011, APD tested out head cameras on several officers, but later decided against the acquisition due to what they said were budget constraints and potential technology issues. A coalition of activists, researchers, family members, and at least one survivor of the 9-11 attacks will be involved with three days of events in New York City to mark the 13th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. The group's Ground Zero 911 and architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are hosting a documentary screening, a speaker symposium, a music event, and outreach at several locations including Ground Zero, the 9-11 Memorial Museum, and Times Square. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth have also purchased a billboard outside of the New York Times that asks what happened to World Trade Center 7. The 47-story tall building fell on September 11th, despite not being hit by a plane. For more information on the anniversary events, visit GroundZero911.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog, SovereignLiving.com, and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. A bill passed by the Guatemalan Congress in June is facing backlash from fishing communities and indigenous peoples who fear the destruction of the biodiversity and sovereignty of their food supply. The Plant Varieties Protection Bill, also known as the Monsanto Bill, is being appealed in the Guatemalan Constitutional Court. Under the new law, biotechnology corporations can obtain intellectual property rights for the plant varieties they have created, discovered, or genetically modified. On Wednesday, a federal district judge in Louisiana upheld a state ban on same-sex marriages. Judge Martin L.C. Feldman said the court would stick with a meaning of what marriage is that has endured in history for thousands of years, that he believes to be constitutional. Feldman is the only judge to uphold a ban since the Supreme Court ruled against part of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act in June 2013. Days after the Islamic State released another video depicting the alleged beheading of an American journalist, the Internet is abuzz with cries of conspiracy. Many alternative news sites and social media posts are calling the video a fake. Authors and analysts point to the lack of blood coming from the neck of Stephen Sotloff and the fact that the video immediately fades to black as the Islamic State captor begins slicing at his neck. While many on the Internet believe the video to be a fake, the family of Stephen Sotloff is understandably distraught over what has taken place. A representative of the family released a statement earlier this week saying their son was no hero. He was a man simply trying to find good in a world full of darkness. Whether the video be real or fake, one thing is certain. In a world of unmanned aerial drones, planes crashing into buildings, and civilizations clashing around the globe, truth really is stranger than fiction. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. 
This is the Onion Week in Review. A month after the death of leader Kim Jong-il, North Korea's 24.5 million citizens have returned to their regular daily routines this week, holding a festive synchronized disco jump rope gala in Pyongyang's main public square. Life in the hermetic communist nation is reportedly beginning to normalize following the protracted mourning period, with citizens once again donning their brightly colored uniforms and performing intricate gymnastics routines in perfect unison. It is an inspiring sight to see so many loyal citizens find the strength to unfurl their long silken streamers and do dozens of tandem backflips set to dance music. Observers reported that new North Korean leader Kim Jong-un nodded once in approval of the disco jump rope gala, signaling an official transfer of power. A recent study from the Centers for Disease Control finds that over 100 million children are being exposed to harmful levels of stupidity in their own homes. Hear the debate about secondhand ignorance on the next In the Know. This is the Onion News Network. talk live and of course you can bring up whatever you'd like that's the point of the show toll free number is 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 you can join us online by visiting freetalklive.com and enjoying the features right there they're just for free those other talk show hosts want to charge you for accessing their sites and ours is free so once again go to freetalklive.com we have talked about everything from the bearcats which is a police attack truck vehicle tank thing uh, being distributed all across <laughs> the United States. We've discussed medical cannabis, uh, the celebrity pictures, all these kind of the the other issues behind the celebrity pictures, because there's no issue to the celebrity pictures. Do you support or oppose the hacking? I mean, there's no real issue there. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of people very excited about these things because, well, America's a celebrity-obsessed place. When a celebrity dies... People get all sad about it, and probably in some cases more sad than if members of their own family uh, pass away. So there certainly is a celebrity obsession. We can talk about that aspect of things. But also uh, somebody was saying that it's wrong, that it's that you're by looking at these pictures or in the case of the beheading videos, that by watching the beheading videos, you're only encouraging them and that you shouldn't be doing that. Now, Mark, your defense on watching the videos of the beheadings, which are only alleged beheading videos because they don't actually show the beheadings if if we were to have not watched that the night that we first talked about james foley he was the first most recent i guess first beheading video Mm -hmm. uh when we were talking about it the news coverage was written as though this is a beheading video and it's not it's a video where like the one that just came out this week where there's some slicing motions made at the throat, the pan no the camera, blood. The camera cuts to black, fades to black, and then fades back in on what is purportedly the body of the person who's had their head cut off. But you don't actually watch the beheading. So for it to be called a beheading video is disinformation. Uh, yeah. It's not correct. It's true. And and so if you don't see it for yourself, you'll never know what was really put out there. And I think there's value in being able to see that. Now, it's not the same argument with the celebrity pictures. That's a totally different discussion about, you know, the vapidness of society or whatever. And we can have all those discussions here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But another uh, question came up with the Olympic Olympic gymnast Michaela Maroney. She apparently was under the age of 18 when she took the pictures that were leaked out. Mm -hmm. So it made me wonder, and I didn't ask this question in the last segment, Not only was I wondering, will she be arrested like many other teenagers have been arrested, 15, 16, 17, whatever. These are young people have been arrested and charged with child pornography for taking nude pictures of themselves. It's called sexting, and it's kind of a thing these days. Didn't she get texted by uh, Barack Obama after winning the gold or something like that? I have no idea. I believe that's the case. Um, Are you suggesting she took these pictures for Barack Obama? I am not suggesting that, um, and that's kind of a weird thing to suggest that I might be suggesting. However, I would say that she is part of now the privileged class, and that Uh, uh, she won't be charged. Anyone, uh, any prosecutor that decided to take a case up against her would... uh, uh, you know, like their, their careers on the line. So the answer is no. Here's the other question. These pictures were out for days before this news came out that Michaela Maroney, mm-hmm. oh, first she said they weren't her. 
Now she says she was underage, and they are, in point of fact, her. So for days... That's a... Yeah, like two these, different stories, right? These pict- For days, these pictures were out, and they were being shared all over the place. They're still up on Torrent. You can go download the... Look for The Fappening on... Oh, uh, God, the, that's the, awful. The Pirate Bay... And you'll find multiple uploads of all of the, purportedly all of the pictures that have been released thus far. Now, the hacker in this case saying that uh, he or she has more and will be That hacker in this case is going to go to jail. (laughs) Yeah, well, if they find out who it is, but... uh, Probably will. So, my, my question was... If you had looked at the pictures of Michaela Maroney mm-hmm. and you did not know she was 17 or 16 or however old she, however old she was at the time, if you presumed are you evil that she was <laughs> that she was 18, is knowingly a factor in child pornography and cr- uh, crimes? Do you I, have to know? I don't Cause, know because obviously, if it's a child, you know, right? But if it's she's 17. Versus 18. 18. How could you possibly know? Odds are good the difference in her body is not going to be there at all. There's probably going to be no change of of any significance made in that. Because both of them are adult bodies. Yes. So. Either uh, both of them are adult bodies or neither of them are adult bodies. But to suggest that the difference between a 17 year old and an 18 year old is the difference between a child and an adult is a pretty dumb opinion. Yeah, so I'm just I don't know what the you know I don't know what the law is. I know that a lot of criminal acts you have to knowingly do something. So for instance, when I was uh, when I'm I've been charged with these identity crimes, and I'll be going to trial for those in another 14 days, so two weeks actually. Um, but you know they're saying that I knowingly used a false or fictitious name in order to purportedly do something criminal. I'm not sure what that would be, but that I would have knowingly had to have done it with the intention of doing something criminal, like right. using a false name. You're a bad, bad man. But if I wasn't knowingly doing something criminal, then it's not a crime. Then it's just a oops, innocent mistake. And so is it a crime? First of all, I don't think that the pictures in this case, if they are indeed just naked pictures, are child porn in the first place. But even if they were, let's say she was having sex. In the in the in the pictures. Oh boy! Is knowingly a part of this crime? I don't know. Your thoughts are certainly welcome. Eight fifty five four fifty free. If so, that means that, or if if rather knowingly is not a part of the uh, the criminal definition of this, then that would mean that the thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands, I don't know how many times this thing's been downloaded, but that would mean they're all felons now at this point. They've all committed a felony. Yeah, whether they got caught or not, they're they're moral felons, and I suspect the people that would be pointing fingers are probably ones that haven't looked. Your thoughts are welcome. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And there's all kinds of other stuff to talk about here tonight, including a news story about, now this is a shocker, couples who smoke pot fight less. (laughs) <laughs> that according to a story at Syracuse.com. Where there's, there's also fewer pain, uh, prescription painkiller deaths with people who in states where marijuana is uh, legal. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Obviously. I mean, they're going to be using pain, uh, marijuana to manage pain. Jeff Herbert writes at Syracuse.com, could legalizing marijuana nationwide mean less domestic violence in the United States? Couples who smoke pot fight less, according to a new study at the University of Buffalo, UB School of Public Health and Health Professions and Research Institute on Addictions, studied 634 couples over their first nine years of marriage and ultimately found more weed meant spousal abuse was less likely. According to I, uh, WIVB-TV, the SUNY school's researchers were actually trying to determine how alcohol affects marriage and how marriages affect drinking. However, the study also had to compare other health choices that could cause arguments or violence, including partaking in toking up. Quote, I think we were all surprised that marijuana led to that significant of a reduction in violence, said the lead investigator, Ken Leonard, telling the news station. They haven't been listening to marijuana smokers for a long time. Right. You know, I I had an interesting conversation with a uh, with a correctional officer one night. I used to work in the staff canteen when I was in prison. I did it for many years. And uh, so I got a lot of candid conversations with uh, staff and one officer Uh, He said, and I think that he's very right, you know, the state would spend a lot less on security if they just gave you guys a bag of weed every week. Yeah, true. Because it tends to mellow people out. 
Lead, uh, lead investigator told the news station, quote, particularly when both the husband and wife reported frequent marijuana use, there were lower levels of both male partner aggression and female partner aggression. The Washington Post reports researchers began the project in 1996, controlling variables for demographics and behavioral problems. Husbands and wives answered questionnaires on a regular basis about frequent drug and alcohol use, as well as instances of violence between the pair. Now, frequent marijuana use was considered to be two to three times per month or more often. That's pretty funny. Three times a month is considered frequent. That's that's frequent, okay. Uh, during the study, 22% of the women smoked pot, while 28% of the husbands did. Couples who smoked together reported the least amount of intimate partner violence. We will come back with more on the study here in moments. Not exactly a shocker for those of us who know a thing or two about cannabis, but if you don't, then this might be surprising to you. We'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, 
Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Talk Live, take control of these airwaves by dialing toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. Oh, and don't forget, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. I recently read a new novel about liberty. It's called Ant Farm. It's a book that even Gary Johnson has praised. Now, personally, I loved how the complex issues like military protection, judicial systems, and currency and lots more works uh, explained in, in ways that the average person could understand them, even young adults. And it, it this is a book that could even could very easily be understood by young adults. It's sort of a, a spin-off of Animal Farm. It's written in very much the same style. And of course, we all read that in, in high school. Um, so how would these things work without government force? Uh, and how state intervention screws them up? Well, you can find out in Ant Farm. If you're tired of explaining some of these things to your friends on how the roads will be built in a free market, hand them a copy of Ant Farm. If you're sick of explaining to other friends about how the U.S. turned into a police state, then hand them a copy of Ant Farm. Stephen Aaron Gray, Gray, the author of Ant Farm, is giving away the first four chapters completely free. That's almost half of the book. Uh, to download the free chapters, visit Ant Farm farmbook.com it's antfarmbook.com uh, it's a great it's it's a great read you owe it to yourself give it a shot i really enjoyed it antfarmbook.com all right toll free number again 855 450 free you can comment on anything we've discussed thus far or whatever's on your mind we just kind of dove in uh, dove into a story here from syracuse.com study at the university of buffalo which has actually been uh, in the works for nearly 20 years. It started back in 1996, according to the Washington Post. The study was originally intended to determine how alcohol affects marriage and how marriages affect drinking, but they also had to compare other health choices that might cause arguments or violence, including cannabis. And as it turns out, frequent marijuana use, which the study defines as two to three times per month or more often, led to couples being less violent, meaning that the couples who smoked, in, especially the couples who smoked together, uh, reported the least amount of intimate partner violence. It's possible, says one of the study's authors in a press release, quote, it's possible, for example, that similar to a drinking partnership, couples who use marijuana together may share similar values in social circles, and it is this similarity that is responsible for reducing the likelihood of conflict. Said Leonard in a press release, he goes on to clarify that marijuana may uh, decrease violence, but it's not necessarily a cause and effect relationship. The drug may make users more positive, which implies less negativity and conflict. Well, that sounds like a cause and effect to me. I mean, if it's yeah. true that uh, if it's true that cannabis makes users more positive, then that would likely lead to a more positive relationship, or at the very least. Uh, the ability to communicate better and not jump to uh, angry conclusions, as you might do if you were drunk. I mean, there's so many angry drunks out there. How many angry potheads are there in comparison? They must exist, but they just aren't, you know, the stereotype's not even there. And stereotypes are created for a reason. <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, I, I don't think that I would take this as a as advice to to start smoking, to start smoke, smoking marijuana. I mean, I think that's, no, that's what he's what trying to advise saying. against. Um, when he says this, but, but it's interesting. What what it says to me is is hey maybe maybe I shouldn't be so judgmental when I you know think the things that I think because different pe there's different advantages in this world. I don't know how do I how am I supposed to know? Previous research comparing marijuana use and domestic violence have had mixed results using cross sectional data. The University of Buffalo study over more than two decades may make a causal relationship easier to establish pending more research. One of the researchers added in his findings he would like to next examine day-to-day -day marijuana and alcohol use and the likelihood to IPV, that is a intimate partner violence as they call okay. it, on the same day. I mean, this seems like it'd be a no-brainer. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, really. The study for uh, was paid for by a grant from the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So interesting, uh, interesting news. And I agree with you, Mark. The I don't. I wasn't bringing this up to suggest, hey, you should start smoking pot. It'll improve your relationship. Yeah, it, I didn't. I don't. I don't think that's the case. It, I don't know if that's the case, not. but I'm not making that claim. It, it may not improve the relationship. Maybe if you were to, you know, introduce marijuana into the relationship, it would result in one partner going in a direction, you know, mentally that they wouldn't have otherwise gone, and that maybe they'll split the relationship up. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but if you're talking about a couple of people who have been marijuana users in the past and they are together using pot, this study saying they're less likely to be violent, and that's that means something. I think it's just one study. You, know, you do have to rep, uh, repeat studies. You have to get the same results yep. more than once for, the, for it to mean something. So I'll, it's interesting. I'll, I'll go on this this record. Um, I think that the U.S. culture, that's the only one that I'm familiar with and probably only the culture I'm familiar with. I'm probably not familiar with all the cultures. That we would be less violent, make uh, better choices, be conceivably even more productive if we were to substitute marijuana consumption for uh, alcohol consumption. I don't think you're going out on a limb at all with that. I think that's absolutely true. Now, I don't, it, you know, there's like our whole life is in many ways designed around alcohol. There are mm. business after business after business that's designed to sell you highly expensive alcohol because you can get a lot cheaper. So there's the, what you're buying is socialization. You're buying ladies night. You're buying music. You're buying flashing lights. You're buying sticky floors. You're buying yeah. whatever that stuff going on in the bathroom is you know you're, you're buying that when you buy this expensive alcohol and i don't know what that would look like in a marijuana bar i'm i i, I don't know but hmm. it you know it, what better worse i'm not sure but it seems to me that there's a lot of violence centered around um, alcohol that drives down productivity terribly that people who drink alcohol tend to be bad at getting up and going to work in the morning People claim that marijuana smokers are, uh, you know, bad as far as their productivity goes, and I don't know that I've ever seen a study on this. It's difficult to say whether or not uh, lack, lackadaisical losers smoke marijuana or whether, uh, you know, marijuana makes one a lackadaisical loser. I don't know. Oh well, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's the that that is, is like a classic false claim by the drug prohibitionists is that oh you're going to be a loser. What else would pot. you say? And there's no evidence for it whatsoever. It's just that there are losers who smoke pot, and there are winners who smoke pot. And I remember that when I was in, uh, when I was a teenager, uh, working at the radio station back in 1996 or whenever it was that I got started. 97, I think, when I got started there. Um, I remember that my my mentor Bob Garrett, who if you listen to the GCN feed of the show, you'll hear his raspy voice uh, doing intros for us when we come back into. Uh, the show segments. That's that's Bob Garrett. He's my mentor. Anyway, uh, he used to go out and blaze up out in the parking lot right before he would go into the production room. So he, he felt it made it more creative or something. Yeah, I think so. People and claim that about he marijuana. He wouldn't do it on the air. He would do his air shift. So he was on like from three to seven in the afternoon. He'd come in, do his air shift. After the air shift, he would then have uh, air shift being he's on the air. Yeah. Uh, and after what that, else would it be? Right. After that. Uh, he, he would then have to go into the production room. So if a commercial was ordered and they needed Bob's voice, he would have to go in there and, and do some production work. Sure. And he would go out and blaze up right out behind the radio station, where I have done it many, had done it many of times after <laughs> after that. Uh, and I just was so amazed by that because at, at that time I, I was still living under this sort of drug war inspired nonsense mindset that that only losers uh, smoke pot or that you can't be productive when you do it. There's more coming up here. You can take control of Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. An hour spent volunteering at a local homeless shelter truly make her death at the hands of a drunk driver earlier this week. All the harder to take for this school and this community. I never knew Amanda, but everywhere I went there were touching reminders of the caring friend she would have been to me had I known her. Losing Amanda was one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with, but I knew I had to be strong for this community. I couldn't let them go through the funeral without my support. <laughs> She's so much better than all of us. She is so much good. She cared about so many people. <laughs> she loved me so much. What's your name? She loved me, Russell. And we have already Shaw with us right now. Thanks, Brooke. Not quite how I would have reported the story. Seems a bit unprofessional to let yourself get so emotional. Well, when people are feeling pain, I feel it too. Don't you ever get emotionally invested in a story? No, I don't. You know, I had my tear ducts cauterized years ago, and I like to keep my emotions stored in a special place in my mind where they only come out for my night terrors. This is the Onion News Network. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Talk Live. You're invited here to bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The toll-free number is brought to you by ProXPN. It sure is. a global, virtual, private network. You want to encrypt your data connection to protect yourself from people who want your information. Maybe that's your local internet service provider who might be logging all the websites you visit and the search terms that you enter, maybe for as long as, in some cases, five years uh, you can put a stop to that by getting ProXPN at the... It's free, by the way. The app is free. Just go and download it at ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users' setup's a little different for you, but you can get it working pretty easily with Linux. 
Anyway, you just go to, uh, go to grab it at proxpn.com slash FTL. It'll also protect you because it encrypts your data connection. It'll protect you from anybody else who's trying to snoop on you. Maybe the uh, the coffee shop administrator is trying to look into what you're doing with their data connection. Maybe it's somebody sitting across the coffee shop that's trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets and maybe lift your credit card information or Those something Those darn like packet that. sniffers. Yeah, so you got to watch, uh, watch out for this stuff, and ProXPN protects you uh, by encrypting your data. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade to the premium account get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world you can access private torrenting ability plus you can get past regionally blocked websites upgrade through pro xpn by using our discount code get it for 50 percent off the annual price point hard That's, to argue with that the code is ftl50 so go to proxpn.com slash ftl Put in promo code FTL50 when you check out if you're using credit card, and you'll get a sweet discount that lasts for the lifetime of the account. Now, there's a better deal, and that's if you pay with Bitcoin. If you pay with Bitcoin, you'll get 62% off the annual price, all by using code FTLBTC. That's FTLBTC for the Bitcoin discount. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL to get started. It's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. So remember, promo codes FTL50 and FTLBTC. And get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Uh, let's see here. We were discussing the uh, this story about people using cannabis, couples using cannabis, and determining that, well, it looks like that's actually leading to people being more calm and couples are less likely to be violent with one another in relationships if that's the case. Well, here's a related story from Fox News. E-cigarettes, one study says, are a gateway to hard drugs. What now, the hell does that mean? Now, this is a new one. To me, I mean, we've heard the scary stories about e-cigarettes. They're untested. We don't know what's going to happen. It's dangerous. It could possibly kill you. This just sounds like a bunch of ONDCP crap. We've heard the stories about these e-cigarettes, but the reality that's in front of me is that my friends, the people that I know in my life who are using e-cigarettes, they're happier. Their lives are improved. They uh, feel healthier. They don't. Yes. They're not inhaling smoke into their lungs all day. I long. hear it over and over again that they're healthy. They feel healthier. Yeah. And so. And I think there's a good argument for it. Right. I'm not a health expert or anything like that. I have not done studies on these things. I don't. You know, I can't say for sure that these things are healthier, but it sure as hell seems like it. How could it not be better for you to inhale vapor versus combusted plant material? Seems like night and day difference. But nonetheless, the prohibitionist types out there who just hate all things of chemical delivery, you know, <laughs> like anything it. anything related to anything that delivers something that could, uh, could affect your mental uh, faculties, could affect how you interpret, you know, your life, how you interpret the signals coming into your brain, anything. Or anything that looks like it, apparently, because that's what, pretty much what e-cigarettes are about. Anything. That could affect you. There are people who do not want you to do it. And so they come up with all kinds of ridiculous claims. This story from foxnews.com. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Conventional, Like conventional cigarettes, electronic cigarettes may function as a gateway drug that can prime the brain to be more receptive to harder drugs, said some U.S. researchers on Wednesday. The findings <laughs> published in the New England Journal of Medicine add to the debate about the risks and benefits of electronic cigarettes. The increasingly popular devices deliver nicotine directly without burning tobacco. Co-author Eric Candle of Columbia University uh, said in a phone interview, quote, with e-cigarettes, we get rid of the danger to the lungs and to the heart, but no one has mentioned the brain, he says. Going on, one of his co-founders or co-authors says that in the laboratory studies, researchers showed that, quote, once mice and rats are on nicotine, they are more addicted to cocaine after being introduced to that drug. Okay, so if the argument is that cigarettes harm you on three fronts and mm -hmm. e-cigarettes harm you on one front, what does your study prove? <laughs> I mean, I just don't know. Look, if... So first, you have to you have to also prove a few other things that people that smoke are worse off, and it seems like it's pretty obvious from this last this first statement that they're not. Mm -hmm. They're better off. 
Wait, you mean the people that vape? People that people have that smoked, vape are better off. Sm- smoked moving to vaping. Okay. Uh, smokers that have uh, moved to vaping are better off. Yes. Also, you have to prove that people who choose to, young people who choose to vape, would not otherwise have smoked. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have to say that somehow vaping is cooler, better, whatever than smoking and that the the young people that are significant percentage, because you have to offset the benefit to the smokers and you have to offset the benefit to the people that would have smoked that choose to vape instead in order to, uh, you know, say that these people who would not have smoked but choose to vape are somehow being harmed terribly. But are they making an argument here? I mean, they're saying that uh, that if you get they're the making rat, an argument, yes, the mice and the rats on nicotine, they'll be more likely to be addicted to cocaine. They're more addicted, they say, to cocaine after being introduced that drug. This, according to Dr. Aruni Bhatnagar Bak- of the University of Louisville, who was not involved in the study but chaired a ten-member American Heart Association panel on the impact of e-cigarettes. That was true even when the mice received nicotine without burning tobacco said Candle, a Nobel laureate for his work on memory. The findings by he and his wife from Columbia University expand on her earlier work on nicotine as a gateway drug, a theory she first reported on in 1975. They wrote, quote, e-cigarettes have the same physiological effects on the brain and may pose the same risk of addiction to other drugs as regular cigarettes, especially in adolescence during a critical period of brain development. Now, as a uh, as somebody who's used tobacco, you know I'm familiar with the the rush that uh, that you can get. From, I have heard of this tobacco stuff. Yes, from using tobacco. I have never used cocaine. I'm not interested in. I it. have heard of this cocaine stuff myself. You mean you've tried? I it. have used cocaine. Yes. Um, you know, I, so I can't. I was much younger. I can't, did you use tobacco first before you use cocaine? I pro- yes, I believe I. Did. I don't know. Not not with any regularity. Mm-hmm. So uh, maybe also eating sugary cereals uh, could be considered a gateway drug. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do it to create certainly pleasure. Certainly could be argued that it rewi- re- rewires your brain. Right. But I mean, it's the, argu- the base argument here is that you're doing something. You're inducing this chemical into your body. The chemical is having an effect on you. And it's a desirable effect for a lot of people. They want this effect. It's pleasant. They, yeah. they want the feeling of this. And so they get used to having this feeling, satiating that feeling, and creating that pattern. And so then when they come across something else that provides them with another interesting feeling, a different feeling, but an interesting one nonetheless, that, oh, I like this too. And so they go into that same pattern. So that makes sense. The argument makes sense. But it also makes sense that it would apply to anything that would create a pleasurable sensation in the body. You know, whether it's sexual activity, eating sugary cereals, Because you need to consider that, that there's no such thing as uh, a drug that doesn't uh, stimulate dopamine receptors, right? Sure. So, I mean, do, does sugar stimulate dopamine receptors? I yeah. mean, the answer is yes, it does. Yeah, I bet you if they put the same uh, caveats or the same, you know, same test together with the, the rats and sugar, they'd probably find the same damn thing. And regardless, it doesn't matter anyway because the idea of banning nicotine is insane. And I hope that nobody actually seriously proposes it, although I'm sure it'll just be a matter of time before some politician gets the uh, the wherewithal to put that one together. Yeah. The toll free number is 855 450 free. And by the way, there have been studies that have shown that marijuana is not a gateway drug, just as a res- uh, you know related issue. That it's the fact that they're sold around other drugs is what leads people in a lot of cases to the other drugs. Free talk live. That will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. That's this show. We'll talk to you about anything you want to discuss, unlike those other talk show hosts who only want to talk about what they want to talk about. That's what they do. And we'll take your calls toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Check out drewsdefense.org if you want to help support Andrew Jones. He is a Free State Project participant who unfortunately will not be moving to New Hampshire, at least in the foreseeable future, uh, because he's going to be facing down criminal charges in federal court toward the end of this year for being one of the alleged administrators of the Silk Road, the underground drug marketplace. And he needs help. Uh, needs help paying for the expensive attorneys that it takes to fight criminal charges in federal court. So if you can help him out, his family has already put up their house, their, their parents put up his, uh, their house and their retirement incomes to secure a million-dollar bond for their son, and he is now sitting in their house 24-7 on uh, some pretty strict bail conditions. He can't touch the internet. He can't touch a device that could touch the internet. And uh, so, unfortunately, you know, he's fairly restricted on what he can do, but he could use your help. Uh, Drewsdefense.org was put up by his, uh, his family and his girlfriend in an attempt to raise some money, and you can contribute via PayPal or Bitcoin. That's Drewsdefense.org. And, of course, don't forget FreeRoss.org as well for Ross Ulbricht, one of the other guys accused of running the Silk Road as well. So, again, they would appreciate your help. Drewsdefense.org and FreeRoss.org. So we were talking about uh, e-cigarettes, and there's some ridiculous study 
that's claiming that e-cigarettes are a gateway. It's a gateway drug. They're going to get your brain all ready for more drugs, is what the researchers have found at Columbia University, claiming that nicotine acts as a gateway drug on the brain. The effect is likely to occur whether the exposure comes from smoking cigarettes, passive tobacco smoke, or e-cigarettes. They go on to talk about the e-cigarette business, now $3 billion a year business with 460-plus brands that include candy flavoring and are increasingly popular among children, according to the World Health Organization. Uh, you are actually uh, sometimes seen, Mark, on camera using an e-cigarette-like device. However, you are not actually using nicotine, correct? That's that's true. I have uh, you know, a vaporizer that's got like essential oils in it or something like that. Um, I just find it interesting. It's just something to fiddle around with. Something to uh, fixate on, uh, to yeah. have in your mouth. It's the it, what, what do they call that? Oral stimulation. Oral fixation. Oral fixation, yeah. Uh, so I think that this particular study is ridiculous and if if well, we you know, it, we hear more what, of this. what they say may or may not be true it doesn't it's i you know i don't care what they need to prove is is that somehow it's worse on society or whatever worse for a person they got and, nothing and they got that. nothing on that so the claim is is that it rewires your brain to make you more readily available susceptible more to susceptible to harder drugs so if that's a gateway maybe okay now um you know, I thought that the gateway drug meant argument was it's illegal, so therefore, um, you know, you're willing to once you once you break the seal on doing illegal activities, why not just do all the illegal activities? Is the idea, and uh, okay, so it rewires your brain, but you have to be able to prove a couple of things, which is that it's uh, you know the e-cigarettes are somehow more dangerous for you than regular cigarettes, so therefore it's been bad for the smokers to switch to e-cigarettes, and I think that few people would make that claim. Um, you would also have to prove that the people, young people that are using e-cigarettes, because there's bound to be one, uh, two, that uh, they wouldn't have otherwise picked up cigarettes themselves. Mm. So the e-cigarettes didn't prevent them from doing that. And so we're just talking about the young people that would have picked up e-cigarettes that would not have picked up regular cigarettes having their brains rewired. Because they claim that regular cigarettes rewire your brain for addiction, too. They're saying it's the nicotine. Yeah. yeah. So, Okay. So a little bit more here from the story. One of the uh, folks involved in the article, Mr. Bhat Nagar, said the findings strengthen the case for regulation of e-cigarettes by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. I think they strengthened the case, um, but the case was really flimsy anyway. So, you know, like, yeah, you've got a flimsy, crappy case and you've given it one drywall screw. Congratulations. If we don't have strict laws on youth oh, access. Now, now now, we know that the scientist has a strong agenda. Mm. Well, in this case, this is Bhatnagar, who was not involved in the oh, okay. actual study, but he is a busybody, apparently. Anyway, going on, he says, if we don't have strict laws on youth access and marketing for e-cigarettes, we may fuel an entire new generation of people on nicotine. And that will be a gateway drug for the use of other drugs, says Bhatnagar. Well, what about alcohol? Does alcohol do the same thing? If you uh, probably you know, start using alcohol, does that make you more likely to uh, find cocaine enjoyable? In fact, do people, Mark? I don't. I've never used cocaine. Uh, do people do the two of those drugs together commonly? I, I don't. I would imagine yes. The mm -hmm. answer is yes. I mean, I. I don't. I wasn't real plugged into a cocaine community when I was 17 years old. Weren't you slinging it back then? Uh, no, I never sold it. Oh wow. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that about you. Wanted to. <laughs> didn't. You just getting, didn't get the chance. Yes, that's, that's the correct. only reason why you didn't do it. So, uh, yeah, there you the go. The guy I knew that was selling it was making a lot of money doing it. <laughs> if you have any comments, you're welcome to share them. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, here's a, here's a neat story from uh, the 10th Amendment Center. Shem Kellogg is the author here, and I thought it was an excellent little summation of some of the things that have gone on here in New Hampshire. It's called New Hampshire, a hotbed for liberty. He writes, the United States was once a constitutional republic, and today New Hampshire is on the forefront in the battle to return the U.S. to its original principles of state sovereignty, limited federal government, and individual liberty. The year Thomas Jefferson was elected president, 11 out of 16 states didn't have a direct popular election for president, and no state had direct election of U.S. senators. The voters chose their state representative, a man who they personally knew, and then voted. he then voted for the upper-level offices. In New Hampshire, we still know our state representatives. We have 400. 
That works out to a relatively small 3,000 voters per representative. If you don't like a rep's vote, you call her up and tell her so. Our representatives serve on a practically volunteer basis, being paid only $100 per year. And chances are they're happy to hear your perspective on a tough issue. In fact, most of them are open to the ideas of liberty if you're willing to explain them. This is a major reason that New Hampshire is one of the freest states in the U.S., with no income tax, no general sales tax, and very few gun restrictions. That's huge. A pro-liberty force unique to the state that helps to keep government accountable is the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, a citizen watchdog group. NHLA is composed of volunteers who, like the Founding Fathers, committees of correspondence get together in the poorly heated back rooms of bookstores, taverns, etc., and actually read the bills. This makes the proceedings of New Hampshire government uniquely transparent. The organization publishes summaries and ratings of bills in its gold standard newsletter, which is printed and distributed to all legislators. Volunteers compile the votes of all senators and representatives and publish them in the annual Liberty Rating, a report card to voters. NHLA has an active PAC donating to candidates of either party with the best pro-liberty voting records or the best survey responses for non-incumbents. Another great source of energy and activism comes from participants in the Free State Project, an international movement to concentrate 20,000 pro-liberty activists in one state. New Hampshire was selected as that state for quite a few reasons. The Free State Project runs two annual events to attract activists to New Hampshire, the Wintertime Liberty Forum and Summer Porcupine Freedom Festival, a.k.a. Porkfest. The Free State Project is the vehicle to get activists to New Hampshire. What participants do once they get here is up to them. New Hampshire is simultaneously the only, or the closest thing, rather, to the old republic and the software startup model minimum state future. In 2007, Joel Winters, a Democrat from Manchester, the first Free State Project early mover elected to the state house, led a successful fight against Real ID. Also in 2007, the state banned license plate readers, and to this day is the only state with a widespread ban on the use of such technology. Yeah, this this is really sort of important. To- you know, for those who are care about the survey state, pretty soon the government's going to know wherever you go all mm-hmm. the time. That information is going to be hackable because every all information is going to be hackable. So your daily travels and your routes are going to be known. A bill to make New Hampshire the 50th state to legalize those license plate readers was introduced this year. But in a reaffirmation or reaffirmation of privacy rights, it was defeated, which means New Hampshire is the only state that doesn't have these things. In 2010, New Hampshire legislature that cut the state budget by a historic 11% passed a school choice bill uh, that included homeschoolers and voted to decriminalize cannabis, though that effort was thwarted by the Senate. A medical bill was later passed and signed into law, and also in 2010, Free State Project participant Jen Coffey, a Republican from Andover, swiped or rather wiped all the state's sharp object laws off the books. And no, we have not been plagued with a surge in drive-by knifings, meaning that all knives are legal to possess if you're not a felon, I think, in uh, in New Hampshire. Yeah, I'm not even sure. I think you can't have a dirk or an ice pick. In Ju- uh, in 2012, a jury nullification law was passed in New Hampshire. He goes on to describe a little bit more about that, and he talks about how in 2012, Ron Paul came in second in both the Republican and Democrat first in the nation primaries. There's something very exciting happening here in New Hampshire and there's a little bit more to this piece. I'll link it on our Facebook, Google+. But if you want to be involved in what's going on in New Hampshire, you need to go to freestateproject.org, sign up uh, to, to de- declare that you're going to move to New Hampshire. Yeah, and get up here as soon as you can because we could use the help ASAP. So once again, freestateproject.org. We'll see you online between now and tomorrow night when we're back with more Free Talk Live. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. 
Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,267, silver opened at $19.14, and Bitcoin is trading around $478.87. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, earlier this week, the Travis County Democratic Party held a forum on police brutality and Austin Police Department's use of deadly force policy. The panel included APD Chief Art Acevedo, Austin Police Association President Wayne Vincent, NAACP Chapter President Nelson Linder, and Police Monitor Margot Frazier, among others. During the panel, the topic of body cameras arose. As reported by KXAN, Chief Acevedo told the audience that he will present the council a proposal within the next year for the cameras. Now, this isn't the first time the prospect of cameras for Austin police officers has been on the table. Back in 2011, APD tested out head cameras on several officers, but later decided against the acquisition due to what they said were budget constraints and potential technology issues. A coalition of activists, researchers, family members, and at least one survivor of the 9-11 attacks will be involved with three days of events in New York City to mark the 13th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. The group's Ground Zero 911 and architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are hosting a documentary screening, a speaker symposium, a music event, and outreach at several locations including Ground Zero, the 9-11 Memorial Museum, and Times Square. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth have also purchased a billboard outside of the New York Times that asks what happened to World Trade Center 7. The 47-story tall building fell on September 11th, despite not being hit by a plane. For more information on the anniversary events, visit GroundZero911.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog, SovereignLiving.com, and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality